Brian, Steve, you have been part of an excellent tradition at the University of Oklahoma back in the 70s. You know what it takes to build that type of tradition, and that is something that Iowa State's Dan McCartney hopes he could duplicate here. Well, he's the right guy for the job, and I think the other thing that's most important, there are no shortcuts to creating a tradition in football, in college football. When you look at teams that have really done it, Kansas State, Wisconsin, uh, teams like Miami of Florida that have turned it around, Northwestern's another team, there's a process, and it's a very true process, and he's taken a real smart strategy of going towards it. Well, you touched on it. Dan McCartney has been with successful programs in the past, and he definitely knows what it takes to be a winner. Well, you know, I had uh, obviously I've had uh, some experience as an assistant at Iowa, as a coordinator at Wisconsin, of, of being a part of those things, those programs from worst to best. So I was there from the very first meeting with Hayden Fry, the very first meeting with Barry Alvarez, and laying the foundation and laying the plan and doing all the things that you have to do behind the scenes and out in front of the scenes to get a program back on its feet and, and bring respect back. So that obviously helped me a lot. Uh, the other thing was the great uh, support that I received from the administration and the fans of Iowa State because I think their attitude was enough is enough. It's been down for so long, really since back in the 70s. What do we need to do to give this coach and this staff and this program a chance uh, to bring honor and respect back? And uh, I've really been able to uh, acquire that since I took the job. Well, Steve, we had a chance to visit with Coach McCartney yesterday, and everybody here really got the sense that he has a handle on what needs to be done here at Iowa State. Well, as I said, it's a process. The first thing they want to do is they want to be consistent in what they do. Then they want to be able to clean the program up. No off-the-field mistakes or problems. They want everybody to make it through academics. They want to be able to turn things around, go recruit, and then give them a chance to go bring the great players into Iowa right. State and give them a chance to compete. Well, let's just change directions for a moment. Talk about Iowa, or Texas A&M. A&M comes in with a record of two and three and a lot of people have written them off saying their season is over but Steve they're only 0 and 1 in the Big 12 conference well RC Slocum has said that they're not as bad as they're getting a, a credit for being and I think that's very true this is a good football team and a good football staff of coaches they understand the long haul there's a lot of football to be played there's a lot of talent they had early miscues they didn't perform their weaknesses were exposed exposed and exploited and uh, they're a team that's looking for cons consistency right now well we spoke with RC Slocum last night and he definitely Definitely agrees with Steve. He said the season is far from over and they have their own destiny. Uh, we're in control of our destiny. If we win the rest of our games, uh, we represent the South. Uh, the way this thing works, uh, you, uh, the people in our zone all play each other. You count all the conference games, but uh, we have a chance. We have one conference loss at this time, and we play everybody in our zone. So, uh, hypothetically, we have the capability. Uh, if we win all those games, we can give everybody at least one loss. If everyone else won every one of their games, we could still, except for our game, uh, we could still represent the South. So, uh, this is a big challenge for us tomorrow. Big game, playing our first uh, uh, Big 12 road game. We're playing against a good team at home. And uh, so it's a challenge, and I think our team recognizes it, that we have a big challenge. Well, one thing I think you get the feeling of, there's still a lot of football left to be played, Steve. And he's got a lot of talent. A lot of young players are getting better, and this is a good football team, and they just need to put a series of consistent games together. They'll be tough in the stretch. There's still a lot of football left, and we've got a lot this afternoon. But first, let's send it back down to the field with Brian Newton. Brian? Hey, thanks a lot, Ron. You know, I might mention here at Cyclone Stadium, it's very windy, and I talked to R.C. Slocum yesterday, and he said that's a big concern. He said they'd like to throw the ball coming into this game, but he doesn't know how effective they will be because of these wind conditions. Iowa State and Texas A&M. That's our game of the week. But other Big 12 conference games find several teams in action. Texas Tech at Kansas. Boy, that's a good one, as I mentioned, all day long. Hans Bard and Henley, both Heisman candidates. And, uh, you know, prior earlier in the season, both players were averaging more than 200 yards per game. Something has to give today. A lot of offense expected in that one. Kansas State at Mizzou. You know, Missouri traditionally plays Kansas State very tough in Columbia. That's where that game takes place today, so that should be a pretty good one. Nebraska trying to extend the longest home win streak as the Huskers host the Baylor Bears. Texas travels to Oklahoma and of course uh, that's the Red River War. Here it's the Aggies and the Cyclones. It's our game of the week. Big 12 Conference football is straight ahead. Enjoy it. Well, it's also Heisman Trophy campaign season. Florida's Danny Warfel appears to be the leading contender, but don't tell that to Texas Tech fans who want Byron Hanspar, or to Iowa State faithful who can count 917 reasons why Troy Davis is the best. Davis is the nation's leading rusher, and two weeks ago gained an incredible 378 yards and scored four touchdowns. Let 
the debate continues. No equal time today. It's Davis against the Texas Aggies. Next. State's Troy Davis, the nation's leading rusher, has been held under 100 yards rushing the football just once in the last 15 games. Brandon Mitchell of Texas A&M and Lombardi semifinalist. His wrecking crew has not allowed a team, let alone an individual, to rush for 100 yards. It's the crew versus Davis next. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present the Big 12 Conference Game of the Week. Today, from Jack Trice Field at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa, the Texas A&M Aggies take on the Cyclones of Iowa State. Hello again, everybody, along with my broadcast partner, Steve Davis. I'm Ron Thulin. Steve, good to have you with us on our broadcast crew. Now, let's talk about Iowa State first. Troy Davis, here is a guy that averages 57 yards rushing the football a quarter. Texas A&M, on the other hand, they only give up 60 yards a game. Obviously, Troy Davis has his hands full. Number one defense in A&M. Well, Troy Davis is the most productive running back in America. He's exciting. He's diminutive in style, but his production is just incredible, what he really does for Iowa State. Texas A&M, but they've got really seven outstanding players in the forcing unit of their defense, and it'll be a real test of Troy Davis against that front seven. Oh, he has his hands full today. Now, Texas A&M, on the other hand, they began the season two and three, and a lot of people said their season is over, but R.C. Slocum telling us last night, his team's coming together, they're beginning to have that focus, but I think he traded that all in for some consistency. Well, R.C. Slocum's been around a long time, and he knows what college football is all about. This is a football team that's looking for that consistency, as you said. They've got some outstanding talent on offense. Brandon Stewart is a great quarterback. He's emerging as a great quarterback. He's got a, several receivers. Albert Connell's a big-time guy. And they've got several running backs. Sir Parker is a finesse back with outstanding speed. And Tiki Hardeman is the power back that go, can go over the top of Texas A&M. They've got a lot of weapons offensively. Now what we have today is a team with a great deal of tradition taking on a team that is on the right track to building a tradition. Texas A&M has never won less than nine games in the 90s. Meanwhile, Iowa State, they've only had one nine-game winning season that came way back in 1906 we'll step aside for a moment when we come back steve will tell you what the teams have to do to win big 12 conference football is brought to you be easy getting to the first big conference championship game unless of course you enter the sitco says go for it sweepstakes winners will receive an all expenses paid trip for four to the conference championship or other prizes like free gas for a full year so don't sit on the sidelines stop by your participating sitco and enter the sitco says go for it sweepstakes today day in Ames, Iowa, as the Cyclones set to take on the Aggies at Texas A&M. Let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines team must. Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Steve? Well, if you're Texas A&M, you've got to manage Troy Davis. He's going to get some yards. Exploit the talent differential because they have the advantage, Texas A&M. No turnovers. That's plagued them in the past. For Iowa State, what's really important, keep a balanced offense. The quarterback, Todd Doxson, can make the difference in the ball game. And finally, hang in there physically. They don't have the talent to stand up to them. They've got to hang in physically. All right, Iowa State is on their first two-game win streak since 1989. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff with the Aggies and the Cyclones. Pictures in the 70s, the sun is shining, an absolutely perfect day for football here in Ames, Iowa, along with Steve Davis and Brian Nooner. I'm Ron Thulin. We're set for the opening kickoff. Kyle Bryan of Texas A&M will kick it off to Iowa State, who won the toss and have elected to receive. There you see Darren Davis. He is a true freshman. That is Troy Davis's little brother. And everybody here in Ames excited about the future of this young man. They think he can be every bit as good as his big brother. Low kick, it's going to be Tyrone Watley. Look out, crosses the 40.
Now, one thing, Steve, as Iowa State takes over, they wanted to do is have a short field to work with. And when you get a kickoff return like that, exactly what the coaches wanted. And the other thing is their kicking game hasn't delivered any big plays, and so they've got a great start at the beginning of the ball game. Todd Doxson, the senior quarterback out of Omaha, Nebraska, number seven, has already thrown more touchdown passes than he had in previous years. Texas A&M coaches very worried about this young man. They know Troy Davis, he's going to get his yards. Davis. Troy Davis, the lone setback. Davis. His first carry, he is going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look, first of all, at the offensive side of the football for Iowa State. Tyrone Watley, number 21. Interesting story. Here's a young man that went to Pacific. They dropped their football program at the end of last year. He's come on to Iowa State and made an impact. And you like Patrick Anoff at the center position. Well, he's really uh, the best lineman in the group. He was a little bit heavy at the beginning of the season, but he's really one of the better centers in the country. Second down, we'll call it nine. Four-man line for Texas A&M. Damian Green in motion. Doxon's first pass is complete over the middle. Not much of a gain. It was tight end Dennis DiBiase. Only his third reception of 1996. As we take a look at Texas A&M and the defensive line, and it is a good one. Pat Williams anchoring down that right defensive end spot. Brandon Mitchell, of course, the Lombardi semifinalist. Dak Wynn, he is a sophomore, the leading tackler last year and this year. And in the defense, it is a defense secondary that is banged up. You saw Donovan Greer, the only senior in that secondary. Third and five. Ball sitting on the 46-yard line. Doxon rolls out. The pass is going to be knocked away. Intended for Damon Green, the wide receiver. Andre Williams on the coverage. This is a young, youthful defensive secondary. This has been the problem for Texas A&M. Really, the ball was where it should have been delivered. Andre Williams was a little bit backed off, giving a little bit of room, but it just didn't make the catch. Now that'll bring up a fourth down and five situation. Back to punt for Iowa State. It is Mark Harris, the senior out of Omaha, Nebraska, a preseason All-Big 12 Conference selection. Dante Hall, the lone man back, and the punt drives him all the way back to the three. Great coverage by the Iowa State specialty team. 52-yard punt, a five-yard return. That tackle was made by Jeff St. Clair, the strong safety. And here is probably one of the most ballyhooed quarterbacks in A&M history. Brandon Stewart went to Tennessee the same time as a guy by the name of Peyton Manning. Brandon saw the writing on the wall, and Steve, he decided to go to a program where he can be successful. And he's ended up at Texas A&M. Sir Parker and DeAndre Hardiman in the I formation. They try to go right in the middle of that Iowa State defense. Albert Connell, he is a good one. The flanker leads the league in receiving with 37 receptions already this year for Texas A&M. Calvin Collins, three-time all-conference selection. He mans that offensive line position. He's a big one at 6'3", 300 pounds. Pick up a five on the play, sets up a second and five. Ball on the 14-yard line. Two wide receivers right. Stewart with a play action pass. Goes right down the middle and it's almost picked off. Kevin Hudson had the ball right in his hands. Intended for Derek Spiller, the tight end. One of the things that we said about Iowa State, they've got to be able to convert when opportunity presents itself. Kevin Hudson has a chance to pick off this pass to the tight end, Derek Spiller. He's a tight end with great speed, and he's got the chance to make the play. You've got to make that play. Iowa State would have been in an incredible position had they made it. Aaron Oliver flanked wide to the left. Third down and five for the Aggies. Stewart changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Looking for Oliver, passes batted down, incomplete. James Elmore, the redshirt freshman out of Smithtown, New York, is the man who got the hand on the football. 
Elmore, an extremely talented linebacker for that Iowa State defense. Shane Leckler back to punt, averaging just over 39 yards a kick. Darren Davis back to receive it. Davis at the 40, fumbles the football. Texas A&M may have come up with it. Nope, Iowa State got it back. Iowa State buys a break, a 45-yard kick. Iowa State will take over first and 10 from their own 43. No score in the first quarter. Big 12 football will return after these local messages. Football players, sometimes you make very critical mistakes or you avoid mistakes. Darren Davis, here's the punt. He just dropped the ball and gives Iowa State almost a disaster, but they were able to fight for it and get it back for the to maintain possession but those are the kind of mistakes this young team cannot afford against the texas a&m there you see 43 year old dan mccarney born in iowa went to school at iowa was captain of the hawkeye team in 1974 he has done a wonderful job here at iowa state in his first year this is his second season first and ten for iowa state. davis the ball carrier Troy davis able to find his way through good for four yards before rich cody and donovan greer come up to make the stop and there is R.C. Slocum in his eighth year. He'll be 52 years Brandon old on Pitt November the 7th. And Andre Williams on the stop. His winning percentage of 79% ranks only behind Tom Osborne and Joe Paterno among active coaches. That's not too bad. Second and six. The first 10 to 15 plays of Iowa State are scripted, according to offensive coordinator Steve Loney. Williams and Green, the wide receivers. Davis takes a step up. Doxson lost it deep, intended for Ed Williams, incomplete. Donovan Greer on the coverage, the 5'10 senior. Might be picking a little bit on Greer. He has been plagued by some injuries coming off that off-season knee surgery. Now he has a turf toe. They were in a man coverage. Ed Williams has got to put the ball away. Todd Doxson threw it right where it had to be. They've got to get a big play in the passing game to really compete throughout this ball game with Texas A&M. Ed Williams challenged. He's a big guy in the crowd. Didn't make the play. Third down. Iowa State 47% on third down conversions. They were 0 for 13 versus Iowa earlier this year. Doxson being rushed. She's going to be dropped. The 10th sack allowed by Iowa State, and that is number 18 for Texas A&M. Brandon Mitchell coming in from that left end position. Brandon Mitchell, number 96, really is a steady, highly regarded by the Texas A&M defensive coaches. This is probably not the best position to put Todd Doxson in. He doesn't really, he's not that tall, get in a drop back position or play action. They like to get him more on the perimeters on the edge. Harris back to kick it away again. Dante Hall set to receive it, a low liner will not be returned. Ball gets an Iowa State bounce and it bounds down to the 21 yard line and that is where Texas A&M will begin play. 44 yard punt, 10.54 left in the first, no score. And we'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, proud sponsor of the Big 12 championship game. Brandon Stewart leads Texas A&M on offense. They are number six in the NCAA, 513 yards a game. But as Steve Davis mentioned earlier, they have been plagued by turnovers. Stewart has four interceptions, all four of those coming against uh, Southwest Louisiana. They had 16 turnovers in their first four games, none last week. Carry by Sir Parker heading over the right side, the sophomore out of Los Angeles, California. Ron, Texas A&M, they also script about 15 or 20 plays, and the purpose of scripting is simply to create formations. They can prepare on it all week long so that you give a enough different looks so that defensive, the offensive coaches can decide how they're going to play formations in certain situations so that it gives them kind of a footprint for the rest of the game. Sort of a feeling out process. Absolutely. A&M keeps it on the ground with Tiki Hardeman, and he breaks it on the right side. Down to the 20, starting to slow up, and he's going to be brought down just short of the goal line by Jason Brown, the senior out of Chicago, Illinois. Well, he started on about the 24-yard line, made it down to the one. That shows the speed 
of the AM backfield. This is a team that rushed for 425 yards last week. This was good for 73 yards. They, they really describe him as a 4 or 5 guy that breaks tackles. Look what happens. There's one, two people from Iowa State that had an opportunity to wrap him up and make a play, and they didn't. Poor tackling on the play, and he goes down the sidelines. Great effort to get him out of bounds or at least slow him down right at the one yard line. Well, you know, Iowa State coach is telling us yesterday, Steve, that they had some problems tackling last week against Missouri, and, and that was something that concerned them. And once again, Larry Coyer, their defensive coordinator, talking about what he tries to teach. He goes, fundamentals. Well, and part of that is youth, and also this team is not as strong as they're going to get. I mean, when you're playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores and, and, and juniors first time, they haven't been in the weight room enough. And so this is an Iowa State team that is still emerging and a talent. So they've got talent, and in, in, as, as really, as Coach said, he, he made the point, he says, we don't have the talent balance all the way across the line is right. Texas A&M, but we're going to get stronger, we're going to recruit better, and we're going to be more competitive. That illustrated right there on that play. Well, uh, Missouri had 130 yards after missed tackles last week, and that's something that concerned Dan McCartney, the head coach. We talk about the youth. There is only There are only three seniors on the depth chart, two deep for Iowa State. Two of those coming at free safety. It is a young team, but this man has his sights set on building this program. And he has started it the correct way. AM very successful in this red zone. They've only missed on seven opportunities this year. Ball's on the one. Hardeman, the ball carrier. Touchdown, Texas AM. Tiki Hardeman takes it 73 yards, and then as they should, let him take it the final yard. You did most of the work. He deserved the touchdown. He certainly earned it. Again, big play that was a, could have been averted by just better tackling, but Hardeman had the speed and the talent to take him down the field and then put it in the end zone. Kyle Bryant, 20 of 21 on extra points this year, on to attempt it. Bryant to attempt the extra point for Texas A&M. Holder is Jeff St. Clair. Or the holder is Bill Johnson. Ball's down. Kick is good. And with 10.06 left to play in the first quarter, Tiki Hardeman takes it 74 total yards. This one, the final one. And AM leads it 7 0. Three. Tiki Hardeman, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, gives AM the 7 0 lead with 10.06 left in the first, along with Steve Davis and Brian Miller. I'm Ron Thulin. And number two, Kyle Bryant set to kick off again. Deep, Davis, Wilson, and Watley. Darren Davis is going to be driven all the way to the back of the end zone, and Iowa State will take over first and 10 from their own 20. One of the concerns that Iowa State coaches had was to play smash mouth, that Texas A&M would come out and just try to run it right down their throat. They have on this drive. There you show the talent of Tiki Hardeman, the power, the second effort. He gets hit. Watch him as he gets hit right at the line of scrimmage, and then his power, his legs, just take him into the end zone. Troy Davis came into this game needing just 83 yards to become the first NCAA rusher to get 1,000 yards by the fifth game in two consecutive seasons. He's only rushed for six so far this afternoon. The fake reverse. They're looking deep down the middle. Dotson has to put it away. Crosses the 25 up to the 27-yard line. This is a young man who is recruited as an option quarterback, so he is able to run the football. He really gives Iowa State uh, more than a one-dimensional offense. When he is on, when he plays uh, uh, to his game where he gets on the edge, runs the option, rolls out, bootleg plays. I mean, here's an improvisation on his part, improvising and making something happen. He's got the mobility. His problem has been he's not been able in his career to stay healthy. And so this is the first time he's got to gain five and in one piece. He was the team's leading rusher and passer two years ago, believe it or not. That's going to be a procedure penalty. Tim Cohn jumping out from that left tackle position. The big 6'5", 310 pound senior out of Wadsworth, Illinois. The second team all Big 8 last year. Scoring drive for Texas A&M. It didn't take them long. Only three plays. 79 yards. 48 ticks on the clock. You know, Ron, when you look at their Missouri games and their Wyoming game, when, when uh, they struggled 
it was Todd Doxson that made up the difference. I mean, he played his heart out in those ball games, and the degree of opportunity that really is uh, really directed at him. He makes up the difference when Troy Davis can't get it done in the yardage department. Second and eight, ball on the 22-yard line. Davis the lone setback, and he has the football. He's hit a couple of times. Still able to cross the 25 up to the 26-yard line. I think it's interesting, Steve. You and I both talked to Troy Davis yesterday. They list him at 5'8". Uh, that's a basketball SID. He makes me feel like I'm 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> he is a small guy, but considering how tiny he is, his durability just really now truly amazes us. Yeah, he ha he really is. Uh, his balance, the way he runs, his running style is what's really exciting. Big third down play. They only need four balls on the 25, but Iowa State needs to get something going offensively. Doxson changing the play. The man up. And he's going to spread out to his right. Looking in the flat, there's nobody there. Tyro Watley, the wide receiver, pulled up and began limping right about the 45-yard line, and R.C. Slocum's defense is able to hold. But Watley going off gingerly, and he quickly runs over and talks to Todd Doxson. Texas A&M went with their man coverage. They went into the blitz package, expecting the play-action type pass on the third down situation, and it was successful. Dante Hall back to receive the punt by Mark Harris. Again, Iowa State stuffed out offense. A little bit of a rush. Wobbly kick, Hall at the 32. Right up the middle, breaks the first wave of the second. He has one man to beat, and there he goes. Dante Hall on his way to the end zone, and he's got it. 69 yards, the first return for a touchdown on a punt for A&M this year. last week in Oklahoma what specialty teams can do and not do to your team this hurts when you're already down seven nothing well Iowa State was concerned about their kicking game and, and, and their tick and their ability to tackle so those are the two things right there that were exposed Kyle Brad to attempt the extra point it's good 802 left in the first quarter Texas A&M gets a one-yard run from Hardeman and a punt return from Dante Hall. And they lead it 14-0. Dante it Hall had 100 yards last week. Now, two things happen. First of all, Iowa State has been suspect in their kicking game. They've made mistakes. Secondly, watch what happens in terms of people that have a chance to make a play. There's three people, one, two, three, that have had a chance to make a play, to make a tackle. Now you've got the punter. He's not going to probably make the play. And then they just out-athlete each other and into the end zone. Kicking game and mistakes. Young teams cannot afford to have those kind of problems. Now Mark Harris looks like he was blocked by his own player. Really, just, and he's got excellent speed. He's tough. He's just a part of that entire group that they've got of great runners in, at Texas A&M. Hardeman, Parker, Bernard. They've got some talent in their running back positions. They're deep, and they're very skillful. Well, now let's see what Iowa State's going to do on offense after Hall's punt return, which gave the Aggies a 14-0 lead. Still a lot of time left here in the first quarter. And, Steve, in this type of situation, when you're a young team like Iowa State, you really can't take the chance and get away from your game plan. And do they still have to realize there's a lot of football left to be played today? Well, you, you've got to you, you cannot panic. And the thing is, is that the, the, the problem is, is where the emotion gets in the ballgame. If they get down on themselves or they get discouraged and then they don't perform. I mean, it takes the wind out of you when you're 14 to nothing before the end of the first quarter. Yeah, Kyle Bryant, had, Kyle Bryant had the football fall off the tee. He'll try it again. Back to receive again, Darren Davis, Kevin Wilson, and Tyrone Watley. Watley obviously okay after that last offensive series. A line drive kick again. This is going to be driven out of the end zone. 
Well, Troy Davis needed only 83 yards to break that 1,000-yard barrier again. You can see what he has done this year, what A&M's defense has done this year. And last night we asked R.C. Slocum, the head coach at A&M, if they're going to do anything different because of Troy Davis. I think your, your scheme uh, is always adjustable to, to what you're playing against. And certainly playing a team that, that has the run capability of Iowa State causes you to want to do some things with your scheme uh, to commit more people to stopping the run. And, and that, that's a little dangerous because their quarterback is really a good player. Uh, he's a dangerous player. He, he's an accurate passer. And I'm really concerned about him scrambling. Uh, he gets you so keyed in on on trying to stop Troy Davis. Their play action passes with him bootlegging. He is a dangerous runner. He, he's got excellent speed and, and running skills. And, and uh, that's one of my big concerns in the game is to contain the quarterback. Troy Davis cannot win this football game on their own, and they cannot compete only with Troy Davis. What Texas A&M is going to show Iowa State is they have tremendous team defensive speed, and that's more than anything will be an equalizer on Troy Davis today. Well, we saw the speed by Warwick Coleman dropping Davis for a two-yard loss. Second and 12. Docks a three-step drop, scrambling again, puts the ball down, finally dumps it off, and it's complete on first down. There's no Carmen here, the fullback. Well, that was good pressure by a but that was some kind of poise by young Todd Doxon. As we said in the must of this ball game, what's got to happen, Todd Doxon's got to make plays. Now, he doesn't look very pretty doing this, but he gets them out of a bad situation, two or three misfires or missed attempts, and then all of a sudden he finds somebody open. I, that looks like a Steve Davis pass. <laughs> that had too much spin on it. <laughs> Actually, it was a spiral, so it really wasn't. Well played, well executed by Todd Doxon. I wasn't going to say it, Steve. Uh, I mean, you you were, you were. No, 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 no. I was going to be real nice about it. That's a first down for Iowa State, their first of the game. Doxon again rolling out right into the hands of Mike Brantley, the redshirt freshman out of Long Island, New York. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler bring you scores from around the country. What a big battle this is. Florida all over. Gary De Jerry DiNardo and LSU. Johnny Major's having problems at Pitt. Clemson on top of Duke. That's also in the second quarter. Michigan State by a couple of touchdowns over Illinois. We'll keep you posted on those and other scores from around the country. Ron, one other trend that we're seeing right now, the receivers of Iowa State are dropping balls. you got to catch those exactly. balls. And the coach is telling us that Dox's percentage would be much better than 60-plus if they could hold on to the football. Again, he has to scramble, takes a big hit at the 39-yard line. That win really lowered the boom on Doxon. Win number nine, the sophomore out of Rockport, Texas. That win will take the option out of the quarterback, I promise you, because he is an incredible sophomore player. Just mobile, just has a knack for the football. When you look at him on videos, he just always is around the ball. First freshman ever to, to lead them in tackles at Texas A&M. Really a work ethic and quite a player. For the Aggies. Remember that name, that win. He is going to be a good one. He was the Southwest Conference Defensive Newcomer of the Year last year. Third and five. Doxon goes into the flat. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Damon Green. He slipped on the turf. Never could get back up. What you saw there in Iowa State is that's really the ideal situation. Get Todd Doxson around the perimeter, on the edge. Give him a chance to get where he's visible. He can find and also take the chance of maybe even a scramble. That puts pressure, and it kind of neutralizes the speed of Texas A&M. Again, it'll be Harris back to punt. Standing on his own 25-yard line, Dante Hall already with a return for a touchdown on his own 20. Take it at the 23 again, gets by the first wave. 38-yard punt for Dante Hall, or 38-yard punt, Dante Hall with the return, brought down by Derek Clark. Every kickoff out of the end zone. Iowa State defensive troops getting together on the far side, trying to get it back together. They trail 17-0 with 133 left to play in the first quarter. And you're waiting for that man, Troy Davis, to get untracked. Never has missed a practice under Dan McCarty. 
He is one tough cookie. Only 5'8". They list him at 190 pounds out of Miami, Florida, and he's just a junior. Davis bounces out, tries to pick up a couple, able to get to the 22, maybe the 23-yard line before Shun Horn wraps him up from that right cornerback spot. Donovan Greer also on the tackle. But what we saw there was classic Troy Davis. If he sees that hole isn't there, he has this ability to really bounce outside and try to make something out of absolutely nothing. He's really, if you're if you're 6'3", 6'4", and you're a defensive lineman, he's also hard to find. <laughs> That's right. He's got great balance, and so when he breaks down, he gets even shorter, and then he's got the ability, the quickness to, to dart and move and get away from uh, pursuing tacklers. Davis, he did. Up over the 25, up to the 26-yard line. We mentioned that yesterday when I was talking to Troy. I was kidding him about being not quite 5'8". He said, well, he goes, it does help. He says, I literally hide behind my offensive lineman until I see something happen. Well, what's, what's the forcing unit? They're really exceptional. That seven, those seven... Uh, those seven guys right there, that's the force of this entire front of Texas A&M. They are talented, they are speedy, they are more than capable. Third down and five yards to go for Iowa State. Davis swings out of the backfield and he gets the pass. He gets to the 25, dives for the first down and they're going to give it to him. For the Cyclone first Fred down. Driver had to come up from that linebacker spot to try to cover Troy Davis. Davis turned on the Jets at about the 24. Made a nice move to get the first down for Iowa State. Troy Davis coming into the game had only had four passes, so this is a different way to getting the football. He's having tough sledding running, giving the ball another way. He's got speed. He gets out on the corner. And watch him stretch for everything. Well, some modest spot. Yes, it was a lenient spot. That's Troy's fifth reception this year. First and ten, Davis will Davis the right side. Time he has some running room. That is his biggest gain of the afternoon. Pick up up seven on the play. You cannot consistently hammer Troy Davis inside against the strength and speed of Texas A&M. And so that's another way to get him a little bit more outside and put some pressure on this uh, Texas A&M defense. And that's the end of the first quarter. With 15 minutes gone, we have 45 left to be played. Texas A&M, 17 first quarter points, and they lead it 17-0. We'll be back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 countries. Sitco says go. Lee Hardeman had his ninth touchdown of 1996. Not bad, only five games, and this is one of them, the big run. Well, they have exceptional backs in Texas A&M. Tiki Hardeman breaks away. Four tackling again by Iowa State. He almost goes all the way on into the end zone, but a, really a touchdown saving tackle. The, really the story of the first quarter was the kicking game that didn't work in terms of not delivering the big plays, bad tackling or poor tackling and drop passes. Tiki Hardeman also gets to take the touchdown the rest of the way. Hardeman with nine. The AM record for the season is 19, and he is on his way to establishing a new mark. Second down and three. Troy Davis is trying to find some running room, gets close to the 30 yard line. This is definitely the best front four that Texas AM has faced this year. And I think when you talk about Iowa State trying to rebuild a program, they really need to beat somebody they're not supposed to beat. Well, if you're if you're building a program, that's one of the progressive steps. That's one of the kind of the latter steps of the whole process. Because once that happens, then you create momentum. Then you start to play on the same level as your greatest rival, which would be Iowa in their case typically, and they would be able to compete uh, in the Big 12 every year. Third and one. Davis gets the first down with a little to spare. This is nice by Iowa State to put together this drive, but this isn't really what Steve Lona, the offensive coordinator, wanted. He didn't want a bunch of 10 and 12 play drives. No, they really can't hold up under that. But again, Troy Davis just gets stronger and stronger. And the offensive line, they've had a lot of success. They keep moving bodies around, and they just keep fighting you. And that's, what, that's the, what you like about Iowa State. They just keep coming at you. They're young, they're tenacious, and they just don't say no. 
First and 10, ball on the 46. Doxon is going to roll out. He has his fullback open. Waits pulls it down and decides to run it. Gets into Texas A&M territory. He is showing us his athletic ability. The coach is telling us he is one of the top three athletes on this Iowa State team. Todd Doxson's looking for an open receiver. Joe Pommetier is open. He just can't find him. He's getting bounced around. And then, but the, the great thing about the quarterback, Doxson, at least he turned the play into some, some gain, some significant gain, and gives him a second down and a four and gives him a chance. You like those six yards on first down. And then jumping off the line. But were they drawn? I think it's going to go against Pat Williams. The big senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. Dead ball. Offside. On the defense. Hal Dowd, our referee today. Pat Williams is the culprit. Nobody moved on that offensive line. Still the way they're supposed to be. And Pat Williams jumps across. He thought he knew something. <laughs> he didn't. Well, that's enough to give Iowa State a first and ten situation. They're moving the football. Somehow finding that seam, able to pick up five on the play. Brandon Jennings coming up from that free safety spot along with Dat Win from the linebacker position to make the stop. Iowa State runs a lot of zone blocking, and so they're blocking areas and trying to control areas. It's not like a traditional uh, USC, Southern California, I-back team with a back nine yards deep. Troy Davis is five to seven yards. They don't have to hold their block all that long, and his quickness can get them by anybody that would be a would-be tackler. 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 <laughs> Davis, the ball carrier. Well, Davis stutter step. Just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Philip Myers, the reserve linebacker out of Galveston, Texas, was not fooled on that play. And we have a Texas A&M player down on the field. It looks like Pat Williams holding one of his shoulders. And that is Pat Williams. His backup is Marcus Hurd, a junior out of San Antonio, Texas. He's another big one at 300 pounds. But Pat Williams is what the coaches feel the playmaker on this A&M defense. Part of the defensive line that Sporting News said was the best defensive line in all of college football in the preseason. Keep your eye out for the Iowa State mascot squad, which will be more. And Pat Williams is up. Davis on the sideline getting some instructions. Delicious Domino's pizzas are available throughout the That left shoulder not moving a whole lot. May have pinched a nerve. We'll try to update you on his condition as soon as we get it. And Iowa State would like to welcome the following groups in attendance. And Iowa State facing a third down and just over five, a long five yards. And Murphy Family Farms. Iowa State not known to be a passing team. Last year they ranked 96th in passing the football. Just under 133 yards a game. Third and five. Doxon fakes the draw straight back in the flat. Pass is complete. First down. Tyrone Watley, the senior out of California. watch Tyrone Watley on the play in terms of this is a great isolation play. Andre Williams really is the nickel back. He gives a lot of cushion. That's a nice throw and catch. Backing those Texas A&M backers back and making them make plays. That sets up a first down ball on the 26 yard line. And they keep it on the ground. Brian Nooner is roaming the sidelines. How about an update on Pat Williams, Brian? Well, Pat suffered a stinger in his left shoulder. He's fine. He's uh, working it out on the sidelines. He could be back this defensive series. That is good news. Thank you, Brian. 
Remember Jasper and Tyrone Wiley. Here is a young man that didn't even play football in 92 and 93, number 21, because of a heart condition. He has been given the clearance. Went on to play at Pacific a couple of years. They dropped their football program. Came to Iowa State and made an impact here. Seven to snap it. Doxon, no problem. Three-step drop, lost it up. Receiver knocks it away. Damon Green, I think Steve probably did about the only thing he can do is make sure A&M doesn't come down with it. He really did a good job, and, and Doxon threw it as close to the area that he could as he could to make the play happen. Good job by uh, Donovan Greer on the coverage. He's got to turn and look for the football. Almost a great effort by Greer to reach over and to knock the ball away. Good defensive effort, great technique. Does the ball hit the receiver's hands? Stripping. Third down and eight. Ball on the 24-yard line. A&M showing blitz. Here they come. Doxon over the middle. Pass is complete. Good for a first down. Ed Williams, their leading receiver with 14 receptions on the year. The junior out of Florida comes up with a big third down and eight play. Early in the season, the Texas A&M secondary was suspect. Watch Ed Williams really earlier dropped a couple of passes in the first quarter. Does an excellent job to just manhandle and get the ball. But really, the defender's on top of him. But it was a great effort to put the ball away by Ed Williams. Roy Davis on a little sprint draw. He gets inside the 15, down to about the... 12-yard line. The dimension of Iowa State to be able to throw the ball, get Doxon around the perimeter, really loosens up Texas A&M. Gives them a chance. And Texas A&M calls the timeout. They want to talk about it. So Iowa State putting together their best offensive series of the game, but they need a good one. But they need to make it happen. They trail 17-0. We'll be back. Nothing is our score. Texas A&M hanging all 17 on Iowa State in the first quarter. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Now, Tiki Hardeman, the big one, he had that big rush of 73 yards. Took it in for a touchdown from one yard out, all with the punt return. And Troy Davis is starting to get on track. He has 34 yards, but it's taken him a dozen carries to do it. And Davis has touched the ball about half the time, and this is the one-year anniversary of the Troy Davis TD yard meter You can see he's closing in on that magic 1,000-yard barrier again for the second straight season. This is the 16th play of this drive, started on the 20. Doxon runs the option. Doxon. Dives inside the 10, down to about the 9-yard line. Dat Wynn was the man with the first hit on the play. Well, in eight seasons that R.C. Slocum has been head coach of this A&M defense, they have only allowed, on an average, just over 111 yards rushing. Only two backs have broken 150 during that time, and only 16 during that time have broken the 100-yard mark. Third and five. Ball on the 10-yard line. Iowa State, man in motion. A&M jumping off the line, and that may be against A&M. Let's see if one of the Iowa State offensive linemen may have jumped. Well, Iowa State walking backwards, so they think it's on them. That ball, ball start on the offense. I think it may have been the left guard, Matt Roffo. Number 75, the junior. trying to be smart. Matt Rayfeld out of Ames, Iowa. You can see him right in the middle of your screen. Well, he did pick up just a hair. He flinched. That's a good read by the Texas A&M defense. So instead of third and five on the 10, it's third and 10 on the 15. The 18th play of the drive. Doxon is pressured, steps up in the pocket. He has some running room. Inside the five, down to the three. That'll be good for a first down. 
Edward Jasper from that nose guard position put pressure on Doxson. But again, the young man is showing some poise this afternoon. What really is happening, that secondary of Texas A&M, they are playing ferocious football. They're squaring up on the receivers. They force him out of the pocket because nobody's open. He can't find an open receiver, but he's dangerous enough and capable enough to make an improvised play and make yardage. And an opponent's 11 for 11 inside the red zone this year. Davis down to about the two-yard line. Jasper just submarine down below Patrick Anoffa to try to make that stop. Troy Davis, the balance. Watch him have to shut it down. He's just great contact in by Texas A&M, and then the second bouncing off and penetrating, making a play, making yardage when he gets first hit. Second and goal, ball is on the one. Davis, backed up right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be short. That'll bring up a third down situation and maybe a foot. Steve, when you were a quarterback in the huddle and you were that close, did you talk to your line and say, guys, we only need 12 inches? Oh, you do everything you possibly can to encourage the linemen to make them concentrate on what their task is and their assignment. You really do everything you can to encourage them. We've got to get this into the end zone. You got This is a great drive for them. It's an impressive drive, and it's a confidence builder for Iowa State. Three points might not just cut it for this Iowa State team. They need the seven. Third and goal. Doxson sneaks in under the line. I think he got in. They're going to have to unpile it. Touchdown, Iowa State. Sideline. Patrick Anoffa with the big block from that center position. Doxson took the snap, waited a second, and then made his move. And he went in for the touchdown. Jamie, Jamie Cole will attempt the extra point for Iowa State. He's 16 of 17 this year. Snaps good, holds good. And the kick follows suit. So Iowa State gets on the board with 8.21 left in the half. 17-7 our score, and we'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. An 80-yard drive completed when Todd Doxson, the quarterback, sneaks it in from about the one-foot line. And did he get in? Well, the replay says he definitely did. Set to kick it away for Iowa State. Dante Hall back to receive. Albert Connell has it at the goal line. Crosses the 20, stays on his feet up to the 27-yard line, and that's where the Aggies will begin play. We said at the beginning of the ball game that Todd Doxson is going to have to make things happen, and really, he has really been a star player in the first half of this football game. There's the ball right there in the middle, past the line of scrimmage, past the goal line. Six points. Good drive, big confidence builder for Iowa State. That's Doxon's second touchdown rushing the football this year. 8-15 left in the half, 17-7 is our score. Short play action pass. Dumps it off with a flat pass is complete to Derek Spiller, the tight end. Derek Spiller. Spiller, an outstanding athlete, and he is a big one at 6'3", 235 pounds. Came in with eight receptions on the year. Scoring drive for Iowa State, it was good, but not what the coaches would really like. They went 80 yards, took them 20 plays, took a lot of time off the clock, over eight minutes. I think the bigger stat, though, on that is just the confidence exactly. that gives Iowa State. Hardman and Bernard in the backfield for A&M. On first and ten. Hardeman, the ball carrier. Hardeman's the ball carrier, and no place to go for Tiki. Russell and Larson make the stop for the Cyclones. Now, well, yesterday, talking to defensive coordinator Larry Coyer, he was 
telling us about the, the line, the team of Bernard and uh, DeAndre Hardiman. Go D. He says, I don't like it when 22 and 20 are in the ball game. Because with 20 leading the way, that could cause some problems for us. Now split backfield. Stewart, short drop, and dumps it off to Spiller again, the tight end. Getting to Spiller. You know, Steve, last year and years past, we always saw AM in that I formation, but beginning really with the Michigan game in the Alamo Bowl last year, AM decided to go to a split backfield, and they had some pretty good reasons why. This is one of them. Yeah, they really do. They they want to get more of their backs, their best backs into the ball game. They want to be able to also get more physical, and so that gives them the opportunity. Gives them more options, too. AM looking a little confused on offense now. Oliver's going to switch sides of the field. Six to snap the ball, but Brandon Stewart's not taking any chances. He wants a timeout facing third and four. Stewart does the wise thing, calls a timeout because of the confusion, and he'll come over on the sideline to check with the coaches. 6.51 left in the half. AM leads it. We'll be back with Big 12 football after these local messages. Six minutes and 51 seconds left in the first half. Along with Steve Davis, I'm Ron Thulin, and Brian Nooner is on our sideline with a special guest. Brian? That's right. You know, Dr. Pepper plays an active role in the uh, promotion and sponsorship of college football, and especially the Big 12. Joining me now is a rep from Dr. Pepper, Gary Rollins. And, Gary, I understand you're sponsoring the uh, Big 12 championship game in St. Louis on December 7th, and you're finding a way to get the fans involved, aren't you? Oh, that's right. We have a, a Big 12 pack here, which is uh, available in all the supermarkets throughout the Big 12 area. There's a card inside the pack with a scratch off and two weeks from now on the uh, Texas Colorado game their scratch off point will bring somebody to St. Louis to kick a field goal for a million dollars from the 35 yard line 35 yard line you get one crack at a million dollars if you make it you're a rich person Gary thanks a lot for joining us thanks for being here I'd rather have the 12 pack of Dr. Pepper up here to be honest with you third down and four for A&M the crowd is standing here at Cyclone Stadium Brandon Stewart is going to be dropped by Derek Clark. Only the eighth sack of the year for the Iowa State defense. That is Clark's fourth. He had a clear path to Brandon Stewart. He's been described as the most physical, big and strong. He is a playmaker. He makes things happen. And he's the number one blitzer on this football team. He's there on the outside. Brandon gets slowed up where he can't throw it on time and rhythm. And when he has done that in the past, this is the result. Leckler's punt. Davis is back. He feels it and stops right at the 35-yard line. That is the 14th sack allowed by the Texas A&M offensive line. Last year, they only allowed nine. The coach has said, though, the last couple of weeks, the line has done extremely well for the Aggies. Just a 33-yard kick, so Dan McCartney and the Iowa State Cyclones off that 80-yard drive take over. Well, what Texas A&M is not able to throw the ball on timing, and that's true of any quarterback, not just Brandon Stewart, but if you can't throw it on rhythm and time, then you get into trouble. You give just an extra step, an extra second to a blitzer. You got a big play. First and 10, ball on the 34-yard line. Flags are flying all over the place, and I think that's going to be against Iowa State. On the offense, still first down. Well, it may have been on Ed Williams, the wide receiver. Ron, my favorite, Daryl Roll, used to say that a, a mean dog bites as a pup. And when you give a young team encouragement, good things happen early, they begin, become more confident, uh, sometimes a little more edgy, <laughs> and all right. of a sudden they realize that now they can compete. So the confidence factor and that question mark early in the game, whether or not we can match up, they're gaining confidence every play, every success. They still need a big play. <laughs> Davis dancing around in the backfield, and he is going to be dropped for at least a four-yard loss by Edward Jasper. First hit was put on by Brandon Mitchell from that left end spot. Troy Davis is going to have tough sledding all day. That front seven, they are incredibly talented, and their speed. I mean, they play, play they can cover the field sideline to sideline. They're great runners, they're smart, and they've faced great backs before, and they don't like giving up yards to anybody, especially Troy Davis. Well, Davis, they're going to say the loss is now way back 10 yards, so it brings up a second, or now they're saying 18, second and 18. Doxon, three-step drop, right 
into the hands of Tyrone Watley. That quick timing pattern, we were here at practice on Thursday, and Doxon worked in that extensively. And he even used his little rollout at times to try to get the ball into the hands of Watley. Pressure package, man coverage. Tyrone Wally, he's a big play talent for them. People have often kind of overlooked him because they're looking at Williams, but th the defender was uh, played it about as well as he could, and Doxon does a great job of putting it right on the line, right where it has to be. That's a good secondary play, good coverage, just a great, better pass. Doxon, play action pass, throws it out of the flat. He has a man and he's complete for the first down. Watley again. What a find for Iowa State, Tyrone Watley, to come into this program. They're even trying to get an extra year of eligibility from the NCAA for this young man. Todd Doxson's got to play real big when Troy Davis can't get yards. Tyrone Watley, again, the defender falls down. He doesn't recover in time. Andre Williams falls down in the nickel back, and Watley's able to make the play. Big first down for Iowa State. Davis heads to the outside, tries to cut, slips on the turf as he gets inside of AM territory. Steve, if he doesn't slip, there's no telling what that play could have gone for because he had a wide opening on that left side. Yeah, he's going to have much more success if they can get him out on the perimeter and uh, try to stretch that defense, even though they're very talented in terms of running sideline to sideline. He can get them strung out and then find a seam because he's great at the cutback play, the counter plays. He's just an exceptional runner in that regard. The Turks tripped up a few guys today. A couple of times. Pick up a three on the play, second and seven. Couple of tight ends, a and almost jumping off sides, no play. Fumble, and I think a has got it. They do. Pat Williams coming up with a loose ball. It's stripped away, a hand comes out. Is that that net, that win? That win strips the ball away, gives the ball back to Texas at AM. Well, one of the things Dan McCarty, the Iowa State head coach, said they need to secure the football. Keeping it on the ground again, Bernard, as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper run up. Whoa, LSU. Hey guys, welcome to college football. Oh boy. Was it all over Duke? Michigan State having their way with Illinois. Penn State by 10 over Purdue. From the Northwestern still up by 16. Virginia Tech couple of touchdowns better than Temple. And Rutgers over Army by seven. Second down and four. And then keeping it on the ground. In the backfield. Eric Bernard is dropped for a loss. That's good pressure, though, from that defensive line of Iowa State to make that really happen. I think Texas a and really done some smart things with their offense in terms of going, as we talked about, the split backs. You've, they've got a lot of depth at the running back. They're very talented, and they also have different styled runners. And so to be able to get them in the game versus an I formation alignment or a split backs, it really, they can run the same plays Iowa State to, has uh, prepared for all week. Now we saw Sheldon Nikoschuk out of Saskatchewan, Canada, who's drafted in the CFL last year. He's limped off the field. Third down and five for Texas A&M. Split backfield. Two wide receivers, one left and one right. Stewart gets it out of the flat and is incomplete intended for Derek Spiller. He had to reach for it. Looks sort of like a pick play there, Steve. Little pick and roll, little NBA action for Texas A&M. Four men in the rushing in the rushing area for Iowa State. They just couldn't get his balance and put the ball away. Stretched him a little bit in terms of where the ball was thrown. Good coverage by Iowa State. Dropped back. Seven guys put in the coverage. Shane Leckler's punt. Mike Lincavage calling a fair catch and he's going to the end zone. So Iowa State after the turnover, their defense stands tall. 52-yard punt with two minutes and 37 seconds left in the half. AM still leads it by 10, 17-7.
running back. We're seeing Troy Davis today, and next week we'll see June Henley and the Kansas Zero Jayhawks. The they take quarter. on the Colorado Buffaloes. Henley third in the nation. He averages just a shade over 166 yards a game. That'll be next Saturday. 11.30 Central Time. Check your local listings for the Colorado Buffaloes and the Kansas Jayhawks. That should be a big-time battle. First and 10, Iowa State. Ball on their own 20. Dotson back to pass, pressure's on, lets it ride, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass intended for David Green. Pass intended for Green is incomplete. Second and 10 from the 20. Iowa State's offense has scored 40 points in consecutive weeks. That's the first time that has happened since 1976. But they have their hands full, and they expect to make it three in a row against this Texas A&M defense. As far as total yards, it's not bad. AM being shut down offensively here in quarter number two. Davis on the draw. Up to about the 24 yard line. Davis so far on the end. 19 carries, 45 yards. Once again, he needed 83 to break that 1,000-yard mark. You see the TD yardo meter done by some of the students here at Iowa State, keeping everybody this near-capacity crowd of over 40,000 updated on what TD's doing. Is that a scholarship position? A lot of carries here in the first half. Third and six. Four wideouts. Making the draw. Doctor scrambling again. Throws it down the middle, incomplete. Watley, I'm not sure he was actually thinking about coming back to the football on that play. Doxon may have had the right idea. Steve, you've been in this situation trying to direct traffic from a bunch of, behind a bunch of big 300 pounders. One of the things that you like about the way Texas A&M, I mean, they, they really secondary in the secondary. I mean, they're playing tough, physical football. They're mirroring the receivers and doing a very good job, and they're making it tough on any kind of route once the, if it's not thrown on time, they're, they're always around the ball. Harris again back to punt, standing on his 10-yard line. Nine men, eight men on the line of scrimmage for AM. Harris gets a beautiful kick. High spiral. 54-yard kick. There is going to be absolutely no return. Kevin Wilson, a sophomore out of North Canton, Ohio, down on the coverage to make the stop. Singing them Aggies on top. Only Barry Switzer at Oklahoma during his years won more games in his first seven years than R.C. Slocum. That dating back to the early 1900s. From a shotgun formation school. That'll be against A&M. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Still first down. Might have been Chris Rubin, the left tackle. The junior out of Houston, Texas, jumped a little too early. Look at the guns on him, though. My goodness. They look like my thighs. Serious arms. Bernard and Hardeman in the backfield. Stewart with a split backfield behind him. First and 15. Hardeman has some running room. Nearing the 30-yard line before Mike Lynn Cavage comes up from the free safety spot to drop him down. Derek Clark also in to help on the stop. Texas A&M's really been able, even though there's been moments of uh, opportunity for Iowa State, they really have been able to control the ball game with the running game. That's exactly what they wanted to do. Start with the running game, control it. Excellent tackle. Breaking into the secondary again. First down, Texas A&M. Eric Bernard saw the big hole and took advantage of it. 23 yards on the pickup. And no huddle for A&M as the clock is inside of one minute. 55 seconds left to be played in the half. They're moving the football and they're doing it on the ground. 
Stewart this time upstairs. Pass is knocked down. Incomplete. Intended for Hardeman. His A&M team rushed for 425 yards last week versus Louisiana Tech. Dave Bershka, the redshirt freshman linebacker, leading tackler on this team. 47 seconds left to play in the half. Sending everybody out. Nobody back to block, and the pass is intercepted. Mike Lynn Cavage with his second interception of the year, the sixth for Iowa State. In the short zone, watch the play, and Lynn Cavage down at the bottom will make the interception. There's the level, see the levels. Oh, the receiver fell down. Lynn Cavage stepped in front. Great play. Excellent defensive coverage. Now for Brandon Stewart, that is his fifth interception of the year, but the first four came against Southwest Louisiana. The defensive coaches at Iowa State wanted to put pressure on Brandon Stewart. They got a little help from the turf. Davis has been quiet here in the first half, but he's able to get his way up to the 40-yard line with 30 seconds left to play in the half. I think maybe Dan McCarty just wants this clock to run out. 22 seconds, as you see, the time remaining in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Davis again around the right side. Not much of a game. During our halftime activities, we're going to have an interview with Troy Davis, an interesting young man who's been able to keep everything under in perspective, his Heisman height. One of the reasons why Texas A&M, I think, has done a great job in the first half of controlling Troy Davis is they had a strategy of coming in, of creating mismatches, of trying to get him in a position where he would be going up against the strength and put packages in in down and distance situations based on what they had seen in film and studying the team, and they've done it perfectly. Load him down. Third and a couple. Davis again bounces to the outside, gets the first down and a couple of eight yards to spare. And now Iowa State calls the timeout as Davis gets up close to the 50-yard line. Timeout. And that's because they're, they've really isolated the seams and not created any. They've closed off those cutback areas because they had such respect for him. So he's not been able to do that on a regular basis in terms of taking the ball one direction and cutting back and using his speed. Well, the last two games, Davis has carried 94 times for 619 yards. Unbelievable. He was fifth in the Heisman balloting last year. Of course, when he went over 2,000 yards, 2,010 to be exact. In fact, he's got a couple of tattoos on his chest. One is a bulldog. The other has 2,010. The other, 1,001. And he has a space all set for another 1,000-yard tattoo, signifying 1,000 in the first five games. And if he can do that today, he will become the first college player to accomplish that in two consecutive seasons. Six seconds left, three wide receivers to the right. Dobson is going to go for it all, airs it out. Bunch of people there, tip, knocked down, incomplete. My, oh my, Mike Brantley almost had a shot at it. Damon Green had a shot at it. And Ed Williams had a shot at it. This prayer was almost answered by the gods from football. Todd Doxson does a wonderful job of throwing it up because what you're going to hope, unless somebody can be the leaper and catch it on the original throw, but you're hoping for that right there, a bounce. And he really looked like he didn't grab it or didn't realize it was there because it was right where it needed to be on the tip. Brian Nooner is with R.C. Slocum now, Brian. Coach, you kept uh, Troy Davis in check in the first half, and you got some big production from your backfield. 
Well, I feel good about the way the game's going. We let them have uh, convert on a couple of key third down conversions, kept their drive going on their one touchdown drive. We've got to come back and keep staying after Troy and uh, get more pressure on their passer. You did what you wanted in the first quarter, but they shut you down in the second. Well, we've got a uh, part of our game plan. Our offense has got to be able to control the ball, too. So we've got to go in at halftime and get something going uh, uh, offensively ourselves. All right. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. Good luck, second half. R.C. Slocum of Texas A&M. Let's send it back up to Ron Thulin. Thank you, Brian. So Iowa State looked like they were going to be involved in a blowout, getting down 17-0, but they come back. And at the half, Iowa State trails Texas A&M 17-7. We'll have halftime activities coming your way from Ames right after this. The first half has been brought to you by Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by Southwestern Bell. Count on Southwestern Bell for the communication services you'll use every day. Yes, it's that simple. And by Mazda. Experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. Flynn has a chance to sit down with Troy and talk about his football future. The Heisman Trophy. When you think about it, you think of some of the great names in all of college football. And when you hear the name Troy Davis being mentioned as a possible winner of that, what do you think about? I think a lot about it, you know, Troy Davis, you know, last year Troy Davis ran for, for 2,010 yards. He was at the, the house and he came in fifth last year. This year, they said that I could be one of, you know, the top people for the house, but I don't try to look at the house like, you know, like a, a, a everyday thing, you know. I think about it once in a, a lifetime and that's it, but, you know, I, I be trying to focus on the games and try to win games first. and. Um, uh, if you win games, the Heisman will fall in place there. What do you say to the people that say Danny Werfel's already won it, he's give, gotten the Heisman, it's in his bag, because Troy Davis does not play or will not play for a winning team? What do you tell them? Well, you know, uh, I, I don't tell them nothing. You know, I just go out there and just prove them wrong, sh show them that, you know, I can do whatever um, anybody else can do. You know, I just go out there and try to do my top uh, performance out there in every game. Now, when you're sitting here across from me, you're not the 6'1", 225-pound guy, about 5'8". Is that stretching? Right. Is that stretching 5'8"? Five five Are we 5'7"? Five 5'7 seven? Five seven half. So 5'8"'s so. <laughs> so the press guy. Yeah. Okay. How do you take that pounding? We watch tape of you. You hit, you get hit, and you still bounce outside, and you don't get injured. Well, I think that, you know, weight program helped help me a lot, staying in shape, and, you know, plus that my size. I can hide behind a lineman so, you know, nobody can never ever get a solid uh, hit, hit off me or something like that. So that's why I'm still here today, still running the ball um, like I am now. And you're getting great success, and the team's now 2-2. Two and two. You've kept this team concept always in the forefront, have you not? The Heisman's nice, but you would probably maybe trade it for a nice 7-4 and four season, would you not? I would, you know, I get all my yards back for, you know, to be um, uh, 4 and 0 right now. You know, that's that just the way I am, you know. A Heisman, like, you know, it's just a, a trophy, but, you know, I, um, I, I would um, love to have a Heisman, but, you know, winning games is, is, is like, you know, one of my top goals. When we talked to, to, to Coach McCartney about you, he didn't say the first thing out of his mouth, boy, he's a great runner. First thing he said to us is Troy Davis is a great kid. You go to hospitals, you sign the autographs. Where does that come from, keeping all this in perspective that you're going through right now? I think that comes from my parents, you know. They always taught me, like, you know, to be nice to people, and um, people always going to be, be, be um, nice back to you. And uh, that's why I always go to hospital. I sign all the autographs. I wait out there every game, you know, to sign the kids' autographs. You know, that's. That does mean, like, you know, a, a lot to me. Like, you know, that's their, their goal just to get Troy Dave autograph. And, you know, I try to sign every, every, every last one when I go out there. And now you have your little brother backing you up. Does he say sometimes, Troy, you're looking tired. Go sit down. Does he ever want you to go take a break so maybe he can get his shot? Most of the time he, he, he does do it. They say, Troy, you know, let me play. And uh, I try to do my best, try to, like, you know, get him some playing time. But... When I'm out there getting hot, you know, don't mess with me then because you know, I'm hot, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> and you tell them just leave me alone, yeah, right? Just, uh, that's right, just uh, leave me alone. Let me just stay in the game. One final question. If you win the Heisman, obviously it would be the most exciting time of your life. Offers will come to jump to the NFL. 
but not to be negative, but looking at it from a, a different perspective, if you don't win the Heisman, will you feel that you have not accomplished anything here at Iowa State? I, I won't feel that, but you know, the Heisman will mean a lot to me if I do win it, but if I don't, I think that, you know, I try my best to try to win it. I try to put every effort in to try to get it. So if I don't win, I don't win. You know, I try my best. Troy D Davis and his teammates as go for it. 1965 Cotton Bowl. Arkansas stands at the brink of their first ever national title. But Nebraska's punishing ground attack has the Razorbacks cornered late in the game. Going for it from 80 yards away. 1,000 frantic fans watch as Arkansas quarterback Fred Marshall launches the Razorback comeback, mixing the run and pass against a stingy Nebraska defense. Bobby Burnett muscles into the end zone, capping the drive and delivering Arkansas their first national title. Texas A&M leading Iowa State 17-7, moments away from the second half kickoff. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines must again. Southwest Airlines with low fares every flight, every seat, every day. Steve, this is what we thought they needed to do. Let's see how they've stacked up against it. I think we did reasonably well, Ron. They've managed Troy Davis 64 yards. I think that's managing when you consider he's had 300 yards game. I think they've been able to exploit the talent at times and take advantage, but they didn't really in the second quarter. They really didn't get it done. And then they've only had one turnover. So I think Texas A&M, they've got to feel pretty good about themselves. But I, Iowa State really should feel better about themselves. They've had a balanced offense. They've been more to the run. Troy Davis has uh, tried to carry the load. Todd Dox in the quarterback. His yards are not significant, but the way he has played. And then finally, physically, I think they've matched up very well. Texas A&M's controlled them, but it has not been disastrous. We still have 30 minutes of football left, and the Aggies, faithful, they have the lead, 17-7. We'll be back. The second half is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by Discover Card, proud partner of the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary. And by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Second half kickoff with Texas A&M leading by 10, 17-7. Kyle, Jamie Cole lets it ride. Albert Cannell on the five. Has some running room up to the 25. Fumble, the ball is loose. A&M saying they have the football. We do have a penalty flag also thrown on the play. Now Iowa State saying they got it, and so does the official. What a big break to start the second half if the penalty is not against Iowa State. And R.C. Slocum cannot believe it. R.C. Slocum is wanting to keep the fumble turnover gremlin out of this stadium. That's what happens. Iowa State needed a big play. Last week, Texas A&M doesn't turn the ball over. They've had 16 turnovers this season. They turned it over. Critical situation and giving Iowa State field position, confidence. Todd Doxson and company will come out trailing 17-7. And Steve, we briefly mentioned it at the start of the telecast how Iowa State wanted a short field. Well, they got the opportunity right now. We got to see if they can take advantage of it. With the opening second half turn off, first and 10. They will take over first and 10 ball on the Texas A&M 28-yard line. Davis, Davis the ball carrier. He has some running room. Look out to the 20 down to the 18-yard line before Shun Horn knocks him out. Now let's take a look at the Discover Card halftime stats. Brought to you by Discover Card, proud partner of the Smithsonian 150th anniversary. I think what's important is the fact that Texas A&M's not been able to produce anything really throwing the ball. Iowa State shows balance, and the other key point is time of possession. Iowa State's controlling the ball. If that can continue and they get some breaks like they've just created, it'll be a game to watch. Troy Davis now just seven yards away on the TD yardometer from 1,000. Davis. Davis to the 15, to the 13. Back on the play by Rory. Pick up of four on the play. Iowa State nearing that century mark. I want you to watch the block right here of Joe Pommentier, the fullback make the play and gives Troy the opportunity. Watch him. He'll come make a block inside and then watch right here where he's able to move. Good block, great execution. 
Second down and six. Ball on the 13. Two tight end situation for Iowa State. Doxson is rolling out. Has a man for the chair and a flat to the five to the three. Here came in with just two receptions on the year, but none were bigger than that one right there. Joe Palmentier is going to come out of the backfield. He's not caught, but two passes coming into the game. Watch him. He's coming right through here. Texas A&M loses him. What's the great effort? Bootleg pass. There he is. Nobody picks him up. Excellent execution by Iowa State. Iowa State was asleep offensively the first quarter. Game alive. And they're doing it again. First and goal from the two. Davis bounces to the outside. Touchdown, Iowa State. Brandon Mitchell made the first hit, but not enough to knock the 5'8", 190-pound Davis off the mark. Rushing touchdown of the year. And that puts him to 999 yards for the season. And we still have more than a quarter and a half to go. Texas A&M had problems with turnovers their first four games of the season. A turnover has led to seven for Iowa State. They've cut the lead to three. cut to just three and you can see Davis did it last year 1001 joining a select group but nobody's been able to do it two seasons in a row after five games go over that 1,000 yard barrier Davis about to make history Dante Hall and Eric Bernard back to receive the kick You can just feel that momentum and a little bit of confidence there. 44,950 liked it. Touchdown number 66, Doug e Easley. The coaches will say that he's holding Brandon Mitchell, but what is key about the play is the second effort of Troy Davis. He is diminutive in size, but he's very productive. He bounces around. He is tightly wound as a running back. Excellent play to put it in the end zone. Parker and Hardeman in the eye formation behind Brandon Stewart of Texas A&M. And the Iowa State defense at least getting some penetration, not allowing a whole lot to happen. Marsaw and Elmore there to make the stop. That is a true freshman and a redshirt freshman as Iowa State took only four plays in a minute 19 to go the 28 yards. Pick up a three on the play, brings up a second down and seven situation. AM wanted to throw the ball in this game 30 to 35 times. They only threw nine in the first half. Second man through. Parker on the carry. Derek Clark, number 11, the linebacker out of Livermore, Iowa on the stop. Brings up a third down and two situation. And again, a near sellout crowd going to their feet. <laughs> Iowa State had a shot at Parker, couldn't get him. And he's able to get the first down. Ruffalo. Brought down by Dewan Anderson, the right corner. And, Anderson and Rudy Ruffalo, the junior out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Texas A&M did a wonderful job of being able to wall off and keep Iowa State from penetrating outside. Texas A&M backs have speed, and Iowa State's not quite probably as quick as uh, Texas A&M, but they were able to wall it off and give the opportunity for the yardage game. First and 10, ball on the 34 for Texas A&M. Stewart, quick drop, drops it off in the back. Flat pass is complete to Dante Hawkins. The sophomore out of Round Rock, Texas. Had a little bobble on it, but he was able to get it. 
that's the type of timing route that the offensive coaches were talking about for Brandon Stewart. When he throws, sets tall, confident, throws on time, it's extremely difficult to cover. Second and one. Like said, when things are going good, that means Brandon's hitting those timing routes. Royals and Parker in the backfield. On Parker second and one, carrier. Parker. Up to the 45-yard line before Greg Schoen knocks him down. Greg James Elmer also there, but it wasn't State. before he got the first down. Two-yard gain. First and 10, Texas A&M. At the Schoen, one of the solid anchor points of that Iowa State defense. When Iowa State's been successful is they're doing a lot of twisting in that front defensive front. And that's caused them difficulty somewhat, but still Texas A&M's control the line of scrimmage. First and ten again, ball on the 45. Parker and Parker. keeps it on the ground with Sir Parker. And he shows a little bit of muscle as he nears the 50. Dan McCarty, where he played at Iowa, coached there for 13 years, spent a total of 19 years at Iowa. 77 to 89, went to Wisconsin, was there as defensive coordinator for five years, came to Iowa State last year, and he has brought a great deal of enthusiasm into this program here at Ames. It's been a long time coming. Second and five. Eric Bernard slashes his way well into Iowa State territory. Mike Lynn Cabbage coming up from the free safety spot to make the stop. Eric Bernard, I saw him play at high school out of Tulsa Union in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is physical, speed, tremendous blocker, a breakaway threat. I had 100, uh, 108 yards against BYU. He runs the 40 and 4-4, one of the fastest guys on this football team. I think it's impressive. He averages 7.7 .7 yards a carry. A&M, an impressive drive. They have another first and 10. They're going to keep it on the ground, but this time Bill Marsaw is there to make the stop. The true freshman from Hudson, Iowa, playing probably about a year before his time, but boy, he is a fighter and a digger. He's got a great motor. In describing Bill Marceau, number 72, he's a young, true pup. He's a fighter, a freshman, but his future is all ahead of him in terms of his opportunity. He is physical. He stood up very well today against Steve McKinney and some of the other uh, front line of Texas A&M. He is 6'5", 265. He may have some growing to do. On second and nine, Stewart puts it in the flat to Connell. He is hit and dropped at about the 38-yard line. Dewan Anderson, some pretty good coverage on Albert Connell, who was a JUCO All-American All-Southwest Conference last year. Iowa State's giving those receivers a little bit of cushion, and really they give them cushion because, again, on that timed route, if you get in the face, you may get a pump, and all of a sudden he's going deep. And Connell has that ability to make the big play. Third and seven, ball on the 39. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Stewart into the flat. Complete. A lot of red jerseys there, and they drop them down. Michael Williams, a 5'10 sophomore out of Louisville, Texas, just outside of Dallas. On the reception, but he is dropped. Sets up a fourth down play for Texas A&M. Texas A&M has four receivers on this route. They have four receivers on the route, and he's just going to come out in the flat. Nobody picks him up. But you also have to catch it. There he is. Aiming for the end zone. Not a very good <laughs> kick. And again, Iowa State will get some field position a lot better than what they thought they would get. Brandon Stewart looking for some answers. Texas A&M, however, still has the lead, but it's only by three. Feels like kicking. It is a tight one. A&M better than a two-touchdown favorite, leading by only three at 17-14. And Troy Davis on the verge of making history. Officially, he needs two yards to break that 1,000-yard barrier in the first five games of 1996. Those are not accounting majors up there running that side. <laughs> <laughs> They're off a yard, getting a little anxious. But can TD do it? I remember another TD that was pretty good. How about Tony Dorsett? This TD's making his own name for himself. Bouncing in motion. For the record, he's got it.
This is a young man who gained only 187 yards his freshman year at Iowa State. He has now become part of football history. Almost 45,000 showing their appreciation and Troy saying, hey, forget about it. We still got a football game to play, and rightly so. That was a pickup of seven. And he's brought back to reality on the next play. Ron, one of the adjustments that Iowa State has made, they're doing a much better job of being able to get outside. Their offensive linemen are stretching, and they're causing, that way is opening Troy Davis. He had very few yards in the first half outside the tackles. Here's a situation where they've made an adjustment. The tackles, it appears the tackles are just flexing out more and, and really getting uh, their wheels going much quicker, and they're making the adjustment. They're just being quicker. They're out quicking Texas A&M. Big third down play for Iowa State. It's third and one. Two tight ends in the ball game. They're going to give it to Davis. He is going to be corralled behind the line of scrimmage. Pat Williams did an excellent job from that right defensive end position, and he had a lot of help to help get the jersey off Troy Davis. Four, Dan. Great defensive teams are outstanding fanatical tacklers. Look at everybody and just everybody is swarming. Everybody's run, running, making a play. They're one, two, three, four, five Aggies. That's good defense. Fourth down and two. Dante Hall already with a touchdown return. To the 33-yard line. A 59-yard kick by Harris, who has really kept Texas A&M backed up courtesy of his leg. He has done an outstanding job today in the kicking game. When the Iowa State came into the ball game, they were really not very proud of what they accomplished in the kicking game. They felt like there was a lot of things they could move on. He's done an outstanding job in the punting game. And they've done a pretty good job in coverage. So they've really improved in terms of delivering out of the kicking game. A&M with the ball on their own 32-yard line. First and 10. Bernard. Jersey surrounding the football led by Derek Clark. Clark was a running back, a linebacker in a high school or in high school, went to Waldorf Junior College. You can tell his athleticism by the fact he averaged 23 points a game as a basketball player in high school, along with hitting 480 in baseball. Second and nine. Stewart has a man open, and he completes the pass to Connor. Now they're saying incomplete. Connell was wide open on the play. The official's talking about it. a first down. Well, the Iowa State fans are reacting as if it were a fumble. Let's see what happens. They had four receivers out in the pattern. His knee is down. That's what it is. Knee is down. So the ball is down and caught. Quick catch. But his knee is down. He makes possession. And they call it a uh, completed pass. On first and ten, Stewart will keep it on the ground as Sir Parker. Whipson falls as he crosses the line of scrimmage, which was the 45. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup, check on scores from around the country. Yeah, Florida putting a big hurt on LSU. Syracuse over Pitt. At least Pitt scored. They should browns the football. Michigan State by three TDs over Illinois. And at the half, Penn State all over Purdue. Northwestern blanking Minnesota. And Virginia Tech on top of Temple in the second. Pick up a two on the last play, brings up a second down and eight situation. Hardeman and Parker in the split back here. Movement on that Texas A&M offensive line. Every home game at Texas A&M will listen to the call. Dead ball, false start, on the offense, 
every home game down at Texas A&M. They have yell practice at midnight. It's amazing how the linebackers put their hands to get the crowd in the ball game, and they react. And then, see, see you see the linebacker? <laughs> Derek Clarks raises his hands, and the crowd gets involved, and the lineman jumps. Just like, just like they planned it. Exactly the way they drew it up. Second and 13, Rockley, Hardiman, over the 50 into Iowa State Territory. As we continue our Dr. Pepper Roundup, Army over Rutgers. Big game going on in Lincoln. Baylor and Nebraska scoreless, and Texas Tech has taken a 7-0 lead. Kansas State and Missouri scoreless over in the WAC, BYU. Third and four for Texas A&M. Stewart to Connell, complete up to the 40-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. Dewan Anderson at just five foot eight, trying to cover Connell, who is six foot two. Anderson, one of the best cover guys in Iowa, Iowa State, but he gives away a lot of height. Dewan Anderson, as you talked about his size, I mean, he really is a covered guy, and he's the best they've got in their, in their secondary, at least what described by the coaches. But I think the problem was is they're, having, they're so afraid of the speed of Hawkins and Connell, so they're giving them a lot of cushion. You see linebacker Dave Bershka shaking up on the play. Connell last year was first team all Southwest Conference as he caught 41 passes for seven touchdowns. This year, including today, he has caught 40 passes. This is only his sixth game, and you can see where he stacks up as far as yards per game on receptions. Dante Hawkins of AM, number six. Our receptions per game, 7.4 receptions a contest. The senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. First and 10 a and Blocking inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line before Kevin Hudson wrapped him up. You can see that coming with the offensive linemen, some of them pulling out and just having a convoy for Parker. Texas A&M have some very talented wide bodies. They pull the left side, both guard and tackle pull, and that's what makes the play. But good effort by Kevin Hudson, number 13, to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Second and three, ball on the 34. First man through, Tiki Hardiman. Not much there. Tripped up by Marcel. Ron, what you're really seeing is that Texas A&M and, and the Iowa State coaches said it, they're just more physical. They're stronger, they're bigger, they're faster, and really all you're seeing today is they're just being physical. They're controlling the ball game by their running attack. The game's not out of control for Texas A&M, and they're just muscling their way down the field. Well, Tiki Hardiman has also broken the century mark for running the football this afternoon. He has 105 yards. First and 10 again for AM. Ball on the 31. Parker, left side, nothing there. Mike Lynn Cavage from that free safety spot, despite playing with a sprained right knee, able to come up, make a strong, strong tackle on that run support. Also in the play cycle. No game in the play, second and 10, number 30. In case you just joined us, Texas A&M took a 17-0 lead early in the first. It was 17-7 in intermission. It is now 17-14, and we are inside of two and a half in the third. Eric Bernard out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the left side. Picks up maybe three yards on the play. Bershka back in after being shaken up. Leading tackler on this Iowa State defense. Do you have a report on what exactly happened to Dave Burka? Well, Dave Burka, just like Pat Williams earlier in the game, had a stinger in his shoulder. He came to the sideline, shook it off, but as you can see, he's right back out there. And his team is now facing a third down and seven situation. AM only three of eight on third down conversions today. Here comes the blitz. Stewart goes down.
The second sack of the afternoon on Brandon Stewart. Both of them coming by way of Derek Clark. Remember the first half right here. Watch him. He's going to get the blitz. Remember the first half where he made a big play? Nobody picks him up. He goes right to Brandon Stewart, puts him on the turf. This will be a 53-yard attempt for Kyle Bryant. His longest this year is 51. The snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick sailing. No. Quite a defensive stand by Iowa State. And with 56 seconds left in the third, they still trail by three. Big 12 football will return after these local messages. Third field goal into the wind. It was no good, and our score remains 17-14. Now let's take a look at the Nations Bank upcoming schedules. Nations Bank, proud sponsor of the Big 12 upcoming schedule. And you can see A&M has a couple of home games before hitting the road against Kansas State and Texas Tech, the home games. And for Iowa State, they take to the road. Stillwater, then to Waco. They've got a tough road to hoe as they've got games at Colorado and at Kansas State. Two of their final three contests. Ball on the 35, Iowa State first and 10. 56 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Davis keeping the legs going, moving up to the 40-yard line. Pick up of about three and a half on the play. Okay. One of the things Troy Davis talks about is that his balance comes from wrestling training, believe it or not. What's Troy Davis? This is what happens. He gets stuffed here, and then he's going to come back this way. That's what the coaches have been real worried about if you're Texas A&M. He gets stuffed to the right, and then he finds the seam. Not a whole lot, but he makes something else happen. And he still picked up four. Now... They're going to have to call a timeout, and Todd Doxon does, does just that. Little confusion on the far side. Dan McCartney was telling him to go ahead and call the timeout. Don't blow this chance. But when you look at Troy Davis, he was 160 pounds in, in high school. He was a wrestler, but he wrestled at 189 pounds because his high school didn't have anybody else who could wrestle it that way. His brother Darren was already at 160 pounds, and believe it or not, both were place winners at the Florida High School Championships. Yeah, and his offensive coordinator, Steve Lonnie, said yesterday that because he was a wrestler, that, was, that worked his advantage because he was able to, he's balanced. He's not real tall, and so when he gets in a position where he's got to make a move, he's got that tremendous balance. So that's why you see him get knocked around, and he still keeps his feet, because in wrestling, you've got to have your balance and use your body. Especially when you're wrestling guys 30 pounds more yeah. than you. You need everything you can get. Yeah. In fact, he and his brother Darren both played high school football together, and the first time they played together in a backfield, Troy had three touchdowns. Little brother upstaged him, got four. Led him to the high school state championship that year, back in 1993. Now the clouds have come over here at Ames, Iowa, but it's still a very pleasant Saturday afternoon. A near sellout crowd of almost 45,000 on hand to see Davis set a new NCAA record in rushing the football in a pretty good football game. Doxon over the middle, complete to Watley. Shun Horn on the coverage, but Watley is able to get in between Shun and the quarterback. They have both receivers, Watley and Williams, on the left side. Williams was the outside guy. Watley was inside, and he comes across. There it is, right across the middle, that deeper part of the zone, past the linebackers, underneath the deep safeties. What a way to end the third quarter. They trailed by as many as 17, but they're only down by three, and we have one quarter left. Stay with us. Reveille looks a little nervous, and for good reason. They were up 17-0, but Iowa State has come back to make it a close one. At 17-14, we head to the final 15 minutes of play. Along with Ryan Nooter and Steve Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're going to have, us, have you with us this afternoon on Big 12 Football. First and 10, ball on Texas A&M's 38-yard line. Linebackers showing like they're coming. Two tight ends. They give it to Davis, right into the middle of the line. Down 
down to about the 34-yard line. Pick up a four out of play. Pat Williams is there for the stop. Troy Davis carries a lot on that body, and he takes a lot of punishment. He is a physical back there. He's looking for the cutback again, and he's hitting everybody about chest high. But he, look at his leg drive. He keeps pushing. That's the dynamics of what makes him the kind of player that he is, and they'll put him in that 2,000-yard category. Second and six. Davis again tries to hit the corner. He does. Gets up to about the 30-yard line, but is stacked up after a pickup of about three on the play. Trent Driver and Rich Cody there to make the stop. Cody, the strong safety of former walk-on. One thing last week, uh, Troy Davis, or last year, Troy Davis just got bigger. He didn't bask in the glory. Here's Brandon Mitchell. I mean, he just gets double teamed. They stretch him out there. He's trying to force to get outside, but Iowa State does a very good job of isolating him and keeping him inside and keeping him controlled. He's a Lombardi finalist and a very good player. Third and three, all on the 31-yard line. Two tight end situation. Davis with the handoff left side. May have gotten back to the 30-yard line. Now it's decision time for Iowa State. They are kicking into the wind, but right now the flags on top of the goalposts aren't moving a whole lot. Dan McCartney has made his decision, and he is going to kick the ball. Jamie Cole's longest is 40 yards. This is going to be spotted at the 37-yard line. It'll be a 47-yard kick. The holder is just St. Clair, the strong safety. That's not going to get there. Now Jamie Cole is short on the kick. And the score remains the same. 12-49 left to play in the ballgame. 17-14 A&M leads. Watch the kicker go through his motion and then Dan McCarney reacting to a missed opportunity. This is a feisty competitor, head coach. And watch Jamie Cole. It looks like he gets pretty good contact, but just doesn't drive the ball. It falls way short. It's not close. And Dan McCarney also, I think, let his kicker know it. A feisty competitor. He's in this ball game. He ought to be. Well, he saw what Hayden Fry did up in Iowa, going from worst to the best. What Gary Alvarez did at Wisconsin, going from worst to best. He would like that to happen here at Iowa State. A&M takes over first and ten on their own 30-yard line. Stewart, three-step drop, half the paddle, and he dropped it. And it right in his hands again as we take a look at our Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines, low fares every flight, every seat, every day. Troy Davis has certainly improved uh, his performance today. I, I really, Todd Doxson, my feeling is, is that he's been the guy of the game. He's made things happen. He's opened the rest of it up. Well, two fighters just duking it out in the trenches today. Second and ten. The pitch to Parker. State is there again. They are not very big. They're not very fast. They're playing with all new linebackers, but this defense, I think they're playing well above what they're well, really capable of playing right now. Well, the key is, is you win with execution and talent, and confidence and emotion are byproducts. Watch the aggressiveness of how this Iowa State defense, everybody's swarming, everybody's moving, going to the football. That's good defensive play. Timeout is going to be called before AM can get off the third down and 10 situation. And the timeout was called by Iowa State. 12 09 left to play in the ballgame. Aggies lead at 17 14. Back right after a word from Sonic Drive In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Kansas, number three in rushing in the NCAA and number three in the Big 12. He is a big, powerful back with a lot of speed. And next week, we'll have a chance to see Henley and the Kansas Jayhawks as they take on the Buffaloes of Colorado. 
Join us next Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on most of these same Big 12 stations for Colorado and Kansas. Kansas is another football program that has rebuilt themselves, remade themselves, had wonderful success in the 60s and early 70s, and they've uh, certainly remade themselves into a really fine football program. And you can see the Big 12 rushing leaders with Davis, Hansford, and Henley. David Thompson not too far behind, along with a freshman, Devon Parker at OU. Since the Wyoming game, the Iowa State defense has not been scored upon in the fourth quarter, because they haven't faced an offense like Texas A&M. Stewart, quick drop over the middle, pass is batted down, incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down situation for the Aggies. Michael Cooper, an outside linebacker who is on an academic scholarship here at Iowa State, is on the coverage. Michael Cooper, they're throwing all the receivers out in the pattern. Michael Cooper, number 38 is all over the receiver. That's wonderful coverage. Roy Davis's younger brother, Darren, has the punt sail over his head, and he's going to let it go, and it gets into the end zone. A beautiful kick by Shane Leckler. It covers 70 yards, and Iowa State will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Well, the last Iowa State drive, we saw it stall, attempt a big 50-plus field goal, and maybe Dan McCartney has that decision again. Steve, he probably will not try the field goal. But still, they did drive the football. There is McCartney. Well, Coach McCartney said he's very candid. He made the comment that they're they're not a complete team. They've got they've got some individuals that are Big 12. What he thinks needs to be the, qualified as a Big 12 talent. There are other pockets. There are other Davis upward to the 25 yard line. Brandon Mitchell on the stop. Now it's just grinded out with 11.42 left to play in the ballgame. It seemed like the first quarter, Ron, that Troy Davis was just not having any success at all. They were stuffing him. He did not uh, have any kind of output at all, and now he is really starting to make moves and make things happen, and he's finding seams. Second down and five after a pickup by five for Davis. Again, trying to find a little split in the defense, not much there. Brandon Mitchell again sliding along that defensive line to make the stop. We talk, all, we talk all the time about Texas A&M's front seven and their strength and speed. These guys right here, watch them, all of them flow. They're all flowing to the ball. Watch them on this replay. That's the kind of speed and talent. There's, there's literally eight guys in the forcing unit. They're all flowing to the football. That's good defense. Pursuit with a fanatical effort. Iowa State trying to make it three in a row for the first time since 1989. They trail by three with 10.35 left. Dachshund on the rollout. Has a man open, but he keeps it instead and he's close to the first down, but he'll be about a half a yard short. And again, Brandon Mitchell on the stop. Well, look where they're spotted. He's going to get a very liberal spot if that's where they put it. He fumbled it. Oh, he did. And they're giving Iowa State the first down, and R.C. Slocum cannot believe it. What happened was is that he fumbled the ball, and Slocum is complaining that it appears that he was shoving it forward. Troy Davis falls upon it. That's why Coach Slocum's upset. Let's see if we can see what happened. Doxon's short. It's third down. He's got to make a play. He gets wrapped up. And Slocum is saying, oh, Troy Davis back Troy pulls Davis it. took yeah. it away from him. Troy actually kind of pulled it away. Pretty smart play, though, if it's what that was Troy's trying to do. Davis, Davis over the left side up to the 33-yard line. And this is the Department of Redundancy Department. Brandon Mitchell on the tackle. Brandon Mitchell on the tackle again. He is a Lombardi semifinalist and for good reason. Officially second and nine, ball on the 32-yard line, inside of 9.45 to play. A&M and R.C. Slocum on top, 17-14. They have not scored since the first quarter of the game. Doxon has some pressure, and he is going to be dropped. 
Keith Mitchell, the linebacker, the senior out of Garland, Texas, who Coach Slocum really challenged again today. On the stop, Dat Wynn, however, is the one who really put the pressure on. Troy Davis tried to block him, but Wynn went right around him. There goes Dat number nine, Dat Wynn. Troy tried to block him. That did throw the tempo off and force Doxon out of the pocket. Like Fanatical effort by Dat, uh, uh, Tat Wynn, number nine, gave up his body for that play. You look at Keith Mitchell. They want him to play under control. He had third drop. They started to see his intensity level increase, and he, be he made himself into a player. Nearing nine minutes to play, third down and a long 12 for Iowa State. Two wide receivers to the right or to the left, one to the right. Green in motion. Doxon has some time, throws it into the flat and is incomplete. Tyrone Watley had the position and the first down, but the pass was thrown behind him. Andre Williams, when he's been the nickel back, number 26, has done a very good job today. At the line of scrimmage, then AM drops him back. The kick by Harris drives Dante Hall back to the 24. Up to the 30, and he is going to be dropped. 46 yard punt, a seven yard return. AM takes over, leading by three. Ball is on their own 31 yard line with 8.45 left to play. Derek Clark has made big plays today. He makes a tackle on this punt return. He has made big plays in the blitz, has two, he had two fine blitzes in the first half. And uh, again, on a, when a big play or an emotional uh, rise comes out of the stadium, it's typically because of the Derek Clark hit. Hardeman and Bernard in the backfield. Keeps it. Dump it off. Pass incomplete. Bobble. Rudy Ruffalo was putting pressure on Brandon Stewart. I was faked out, but Rudy wasn't. That may be the third or fourth drop pass. Derek Spiller, number 87, is the tight end right here. That's him. He's going to go. Everything was perfect. That's outstanding fake. And he just doesn't catch the ball. He's a 4-5-40 guy and a tight end at 6-3. Well, he had eight, had eight receptions coming into the game. Drop play, hard in, no place to go. Tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Michael Cooper, who was a starter last year, expected to start this year. Now on second team, but the coaches still feel he is the glue of this defense. And have you noticed how more sure tackling is coming out of Iowa State? Michael Cooper, number 38. The coach described him as not a great player, but he's a veteran. He's been around. He wraps him up around the ankle and puts Tiki Hardeman on the ground. Third and 12 for a &M. Stewart looks inside. A lot of room. First down. Goodbye. Albert Connell, one man to beat, and he's got him. Touchdown. We talked about Connell, how he has the ability to make that big play, and that timing pattern was there, and Connell makes Iowa State pay for it. He now, with that touchdown, moves into third place on touchdown receptions in AM history. Bryant, Bryant to attempt the extra point. AM has got some breathing room. And it is good. It's good. Still a lot of time left in the football game. 7.52 to play in the fourth, but Stewart hooks up with Albert Cotto. And AM leads at 24 14. Big 12 football will return after these local messages. 24-14 is the score, a 10-point advantage by AM. 7.52 left to play in the ball game. Connell on the reception, giving the Aggies a little bit of breathing room. Watley 
Davis and Wilson back to receive the kickoff from AM. And it is Watley at the 15, heads to his left. Cuts up field, makes it up to the 22 yard line. Take a look at that touchdown once again, Steve. There's a couple of things that happen. Let's hold it right here. First of all, he's going to pull and go out here and make this block. The tight end's going to go out here and make this block, and then Connell's going to come the inside and make the catch. Okay, let's watch it. The delay down the line. Everybody's blocking. And that's how he cuts the seam. And then Dewan Anderson, number 14, has a chance at the end of the play to make the tackle. The, the gremlin of poor tackling gets him again. Connell is tough to bring down, but how about those big 300-pound linemen going down the line of scrimmage to make the blocks? Davis. Davis run out of bounds by Horn. Davis run out of bounds by Shun Horn. Well, Dan McCartney saw Texas A&M not waste a whole lot of time on that last scoring drive. Three plays, 68 yards, less than a minute to do it. The 70-yard touchdown to Connell. From that man, Brandon Stewart. Second down and six, ball on the 28. A lot of jumping up and down. I think it may have been Tim Cohn on that left tackle spot. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still second down. So Iowa State will be pushed back again. <laughs> Dan McCarney is upset because he knows that his team is elevating their game. They're playing on a different level. This is where you gain momentum in terms of building a program. That's why he's upset. Five men on the line of scrimmage. A&M showing blitz, and here they come. Oh, Doxon tries to spin out, but you can hear the pads popping up here. Donovan Greer coming in from that cornerback spot. The third sack by that AM defense today brings them up to 20 for the season. I can hear the popping from up here. Joe Pomentier, 42, makes it a, a big stick, and they just collapse around the quarterback, Todd Doxson. Just a lot of pressure, a tena tenacious effort on the part of that defense, and they just close him down. Again, he's not as good in the pocket. They've got to get him out of the perimeter. That's where he's had success. He has faced a lot of big third downs, but if they don't get this, they're going to have a big hole to climb out of. Third and 17, Doxon looking downfield. Complete. Ed Williams makes the reception, and that is going to be a first down. You talked about getting Doxon outside. When he sprints outside, it gives him a little more time, and he also found his receiver. Well, it just opens so many things up because now cornerbacks get a little bit nervous. Is he going to come out and run the ball? So they get tentative in what they do, and receivers can typically get away from their coverage. No pressure. He's got plenty of time. Ed Williams is going to make the play. Perfectly thrown ball. No, it's a catch. It is. Very well thrown ball. Good effort by everyone. Donovan Greer is where he needs to be. He just didn't time his jump. Williams knew exactly where that first down marker was. Doxon again, and look out. Bunch of white jerseys. He is going to be tossed down. That should be grounding, and it is. And lost him down. The only person near that football was R.C. Slocum. Brandon Mitchell was the one putting the pressure on again. That really is the first sophomore mistake that Todd Doxon's made today. I mean, you got to take the ball, take the hit. You're going to lose what he's done now. He's lost the yardage, plus he's lost the down. And they desperately are trying to get momentum and get something positive going, and that was a mistake. He'll regret that. He'll read about that in the paper tomorrow and regret it. That's one of those, I shouldn't have done that. You know it as soon as you do it as a quarterback, and you just say, that was a stupid play. You just have to you eat the football. Yep, you got to eat it. You got to take the hit. You got to spend some time on the grass with... Mitchell and Williams and some of the other guys. You're going down anyway. Yeah, you're going down. <laughs> it's, he might not like, it's not like you let it go and he's going to let you up. Yeah, but it's so, you know, he's, he's played a wonderful game, and right. it's just one of those mental mistakes that you make in a game. Iowa State in a hole, second and 21. 
Up to the 44-yard line before Rich Cody tied him down. A 20-yard pickup on the play. See, and that's what happens. Great players make mistakes, come back, make big plays. Damon Green does the job here, catches the ball, stops, keeps his feet, and gets away from the defender. Stays inbound. Does a good job avoiding tackles and moves the ball upfield. Gives them a chance, third and short. They have three for the first. Green, the junior out of San Bernardino, California. Blitz. They dump it out to yeah. Davis, wide open. He has some running room to the 50, to the 40. A wonderful play by Davis, a tremendous play by Dat Wynn, the linebacker, who catches him from behind. What happens, everybody mans up, so it's a blitz. Troy Doxon knows it. He knows he's got a relief valve, and a good one in Troy Davis. Troy's part pointing out where the traffic is and makes a great effort to go out. That's fanatical football. Good drive by Iowa State. They are feisty. Big time. 5.20 to play. They trail by 10. First and ten, Davis bounces out to the outside. He's down to the 30-yard line, takes the hit, and steps out of bounds at the 28. Well, he has taken on the Iowa State all-time lead in all-purpose yards. Passes Dexter Green, who did it back in the mid to late 70s. He had a pretty good stiff arm there on Toya Jones to get the extra yards. And it's first and ten. He's playing his heart out, but this team is playing like a team. This is not a one-dimensional offense today. First and ten, ball on the 27. Doxon, scramble. Lost it up into the end zone. He has a man. His little brother, Darren Davis, with his first collegiate touchdown. The freshman yeah. from Miami, Florida, makes this a family affair this afternoon. Keep it going, baby. Keep them up. Big time. Twenty to fourteen, the extra point attempt, and it is good. Five minutes left to play in the ball game, and the Cyclones refuse to die. 24-21 is our score. AM still leads. You're going to see two Herculean efforts on two players' parts. Todd Doxon first to scramble and get away from Brandon Mitchell. Then he throws the ball up. We thought the ball was going too deep. And here's his reaction as he knows he's got a touchdown. And there's the reception. That is stretched out 110%. Davis is only five foot eight like his brother. Coach McCartney knows it's not over. Yeah, that was great, but we got to keep going. And the first thing I need to do is keep the headsets on. We got ourselves a football game. 24 21, five minutes, a lot of time left. Can AM answer? When Todd Dotson gets outside, he puts a lot of pressure. It's just very difficult for secondary backs to react. And then if he gets away from that forcing seven unit, then he does. He puts the ball in a position to catch it, and then you had an incredible catch. 27-yard touchdown, and just like his brother with the gold teeth, Darren Davis gets into the act, and the sun breaks through the clouds here again at Ames. Last year, this Iowa State team was just 3-8, 1-6 in the Big 8. They only beat Oklahoma State. 
This year, they're two and two. Riding a two-game win streak. Their first since 1989. It's going to be Dante Hall at the one. And he is tripped up at the 15-yard line, lunges forward up to about the 19. Kevin Wilson, a quarterback out of North Canton, Ohio, who has played well specialty teams on the stuff. Touchdown There's again. the throw, and again, watch the stretch. I, I, I think Andre Williams thought the ball was thrown out of the end zone. He kind of let up and was a little bit shocked. Kind of lost where the ball was, and Darren Davis just extended out full reach and made a just an incredible catch. I think you're right. I think he thought it was overthrown like we did. I did. The lead is three, and AM is going to keep it on the ground, and they're going to be stopped. Andre Williams is the nickel back. Had a season off-season knee injury. I think he just lost where the ball was. It took that kind of catch to make the play, obviously. But I think he just got a little bit lost of where the ball was and was out of step to be able to jump to make something happen and to maybe distract Darren Davis. Loss of one on the play. Second down and 11. Bernard and Hardeman in the foot backfield. They keep it on the ground again. Up over the 20 to the 21-yard line is Tiki Hardeman. He has been a little quiet since that 73-yard jaunt early in the first. Now the playing field has been leveled. And the reason it's been leveled is because Iowa State's into the ball game. They've got confidence. We've got a player down on the field. But they've gained confidence. They're playing like a team that they haven't shown that they are. And they're playing exceptionally well and getting things done. The fans are into it. And Texas a and is going to have the fight for their life. Fortunately, Texas a and has been in this situation before. They know how to handle the pressure. Bill Marshaw, the injured player, walks off under his own power. We have three minutes and 56 seconds left to play in Ames, Iowa. Texas a and holding on to a 24-21 lead over the Cyclones. Third down and eight. Parker and Hardeman in the backfield. The quick pass is going to be incomplete. No penalty flag is thrown. An inspired effort by this Iowa State defense. Brandon Stewart does his job. He throws the ball on rhythm, on time. The ball's a little bit slightly, maybe to the left shoulder. It needs to be to the right shoulder. Dewan Anderson does a wonderful job of stripping the ball. Iowa State coming. They don't touch the punter. Barely. Davis is drilled wow. all the way back. What a kick by Shane Leckler. Have mercy. And it is going to be down at the four-yard line. That is two kicks in a row that Leckler has about kicked it out of the stadium. 77 yards on that punt. Just when Iowa State thought they were going to get some pretty decent field position. They come with 10 men, and they can't stop it. Kicking game is a vital part. You can win the ball game with performing on two or three levels of the game. He did a wonderful job. You know, I wonder if the I ball... I think that should have been a touchback. I don't think he had possession of it. I thought you had to come down and at least hold your position, at least stop your feet. His back is to us, so it's extremely difficult to see if he had possession. Well, well, he only had maybe, maybe one foot before he it, stepped in the end zone. It's a, much of a judgment call because when momentum takes you in, right. that would that would be uh, all right. That would be appropriate. Davis up to the sixth with 3:24 left to play in the ball game. Now we were able to tell on this replay. Coming right at us. He had possession. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, that is pretty, pretty doggone close. Jason Webster had the ball in his hands. Davis. That win lowering the boom again. Brian Nooner, you're on the
the sideline. What do you have for us? Well, let's go back to when Iowa State played Missouri. They were in a similar situation right before the end of the first half. They were on their own two-yard line with less than a minute to go, and they went the distance. How did they go to the distance? By running the ball with Troy Davis. It looks like they've been here before, and they're going to go back to what they had the success on that drive against Mizzou. Well, on third and eight, they have their hands full, Brad. Two wide to the left, one to the top of your screen. Fumble, Knoxon keeps it alive, lets it fly, passes incomplete. Watley wants the interference call. He is not going to get it. Andre Williams made a nice defensive play. Now Iowa State will be forced to punt with their backs in the end zone. It was a good idea. What they wanted to do is show an option-type look come down the line, draw the outside linebackers in, and then hit the receiver. He fumbled the ball coming out from under the center. Ten men on the line. A&M, now they're bringing some back. Nobody is back to receive this kick of Mark Harris. He is just going to let it fly. It's not going to be that good. He needs a good bounce. He's not going to get it. Like a nine iron, it just takes a divot out and stops right at the 50-yard line. 43-yard kick, and Dan McCartney's defense has to do it one more time. As we take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup, Florida, there's no question, they are the number one team in the country. Other scores from around the nation. Penn State leading Purdue. Minnesota trying to make a game of it. Nebraska all over Baylor and Chuck Reedy's club. Kansas on top of Spike Dykes and Texas Tech at halftime. First and ten, ball on the Iowa State 48-yard line, 2.02 left to play. Parker is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Michael Cooper on the stop. And a timeout is going to be called by Iowa State. Other scores, Kansas State over Missouri by a couple of touchdowns. BYU passing themselves over UNLV. Notre Dame hosting Washington. Tulsa, pretty good ball club. So is Colorado State. Sonny Lubick's done a nice job at Colorado State. Cincinnati and BC, no score. That is in the first. And that's our Dr. Pepper roundup. You know, Steve, kudos, obviously, to the, tech, to the uh, Iowa State defense. They are playing better than we had thought or anticipated they could play. They don't have that much talent, to be honest with you, in comparison to the rest of the Big 12. But these youngsters have really put their uh, necks on the line today. They, they, they fought them every step of the way. They did not get discouraged when they got down 17 to nothing. They fought back. Uh, they've shown a lot of character. This has been a team that if you look, watch them on video, they just fight you. And, and Coach McCartney made the comment, he said, we don't have the talent to match up with Texas A&M. It would take a fanatical effort. We've got to get some breaks. But to Texas A&M's credit, they have managed this game. They have controlled Troy Davis, and they have done a lot of things well. They just got into a real fight with the street fighters. Both teams over 300 yards total offense. Iowa State out of timeouts. They're going to keep it on the ground. No place to go. Six red jerseys surround Sir Parker. This is what it's going to be like in the Big 12 Conference. You're going to go every Saturday and go compete. And somebody's going to take you, right. to, take you to task each weekend. This Iowa State team certainly has played that way with Texas A&M. There will be no easy games. No, no. This is an AM team that averages over 500 yards total offense. They just have broken the 300 yard barrier today. Five on the line of scrimmage. Parker breaks through, spins around, makes his way up to the 45 yard line. So on the third and 14, Parker tried to make something happen, and it looks like Iowa State may get one last chance at this with 101 left to play. Fourth down and about six to go. And a and is just going to let this one run down as far as they can. Go ahead and take the penalty and then kick it away. Now Brandon Stewart just standing there waiting. The clock now down to 32. Iowa State, no timeouts left.
Well, they let it run down. 35 seconds. And it'll be fourth down, and now a bunch, and uh, a and is going to kick it away. Just 26 seconds left to play in the ballgame. Iowa State would need a miracle. Leckler, his last kick was 77 yards. Darren Davis stands on his 10. They almost get a piece of it, and it's going to probably sail in the end zone, and it does. Another booming kick by Shane Leckler. One yarder today, a 70, a 50. He has kept AM out of trouble. 20 seconds left, Iowa State trailing by three. We saw Jamie Cole kick into the wind the last time for Iowa State, trying a field goal was well short. So Iowa State's going to have to put on a lot of yardage in order to get Jamie Cole in the field goal range. This is a real uh, challenge for Iowa State. They're not a team that can go quickly down the field. Todd Doxson's not a drop back passer. He's gonna have to roll out. He's gonna gobble up time, but they're capable. They have the right kind of talent in the receiver positions. Movement on Iowa State's line. Doxson a pretty good day, 13 for 24. Ball. Ball start on the offense. 191 yards. One second ticked off the clock. Reset the clock for 20 seconds. And they're going to put the second back on. Troy Davis today, 39 yards, 130 carries. The first time a team or an individual has broken the century mark against his AM defense this year. And Davis keeps his string of 100 yard games intact. Doxson, pressure from behind, steps up in the pocket, now he's going to run. A lot of time is being run off the clock, eight seconds ran off, and that may do it. you got to turn loose of the ball and throw it somewhere to stop the clock. And Ed, no timeouts. And Ed Williams, Steve, was standing way down the field, and he didn't even make an effort to get behind the line of scrimmage so they could run another play, and that's the way it ends. The ball game ends. It was a dogfight for Texas A&M, but they see their record even up. Well, I think if you're Dan McCartney, you've got to feel very good about your football team and the way they play. This is the kind of uh, kind of game that you can build confidence off of. They played their hearts out, but to Texas A&M's credit, they really controlled the game. They were workmanlike in the way they went about it. They never got rattled. Yeah, they kept the road, their poise, so. and that's to the credit to Texas A&M. They've been in these situations, and they've got talent. I think they felt like they had the talent advantage, but they did a fine job on both sides of the ball, both teams. And yeah, we'd like to thank Tom Crochelle from Iowa State, Sports Information Director, and our good friend Alan Cannon right there with R.C. Slocum. Thank you, gentlemen. You've made our job very easy today. Now let's go down to Brian Nooner and the winning coach, R.C. Slocum. Brian? R.C., this is a pretty good taste of what Big 12 football is all about, isn't it? You come up here, and Iowa State gave you all you can handle, but you come away with a win. Well, you're always happy to go on the road and win. Again, I'm disappointed in how we play. I'm always happy. I'm not going to apologize for winning the game. And I, uh, Our team today did what it took to win the ball game on the road, and it's our first conference uh, win on the road, so we're very happy with that. Still disappointed in the, in the mistake, so we made it a lot closer than, than what I'd like for it to be. Got to give Iowa State credit. They did a nice job. Coach McCartney's done a good job with his team here. All right, 17 points in the first quarter, and then you kind of take a couple quarters off offensive-wise, and you come back, and Albert Connell gets the big play that was the difference. Well, Iowa State did a good job. They were crowding the, the line of scrimmage, and, uh, you know, when you do that, uh, you, you make teams look bad, but you're also, it's, uh, it's a high-risk type thing, and we hit the big play on them, and uh, it was big big play for us. I thought Albert did a good job taking it all the way in, but really some drop balls here and there and things really I think allowed it to be a lot closer than, or at least it hurt our offensive production. 
Troy Davis gets over 100 yards, but considering he was averaging almost 230 coming into this contest, you have to feel pretty good about the way you kept him in check. I thought for the most part we did a good job. You know, this young man had over 150 yards against Nebraska last year. They won the national championship, so we knew he'd get some yards. We wanted to try to keep him contained and keep him from making a big play, and I think we did a pretty good job of that. RC, congratulations on your first Big 12 Conference win. That's RC Slocum of Texas A&M. Ron Thulin, let's send it back it up, up to you from the booth. All right, RC goes to 3-3. Three and three. Iowa State falls to 2-3. and 24-21 is our final score, and we'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper. And it's 85 Dr. Pepper bottlers. Happy to bring you this inaugural season of Big 12 football.